How did your crazy ex become your crazy ex? After I broke up with her, she used makeup to feign bruising on her arms, neck, and face. She then proceeded to send pictures of it to all of our mutual friends warning them about me. Uh, was her name Fiona? I suspect she was crazy long before I knew her, but I realized she was a freaking sociopath when she asked me to euthanize my dog because he was taking up too much of our time. Uh, holy crap that's a nightmare. Ever had a girlfriend threaten to cut her wrists because you're the sims character is dating the computer generated neighbor? I did. I can't decide if this is hilarious or horrifying. Sims characters should never date their neighbors. She woke me up because I had the night sweats and she was convinced I had AIDS. For some reason I decided to appease her and got a full STD screen including an expensive AIDS test. A few weeks later I drove to her house to give her my signed note, I had to specifically request, stating my clean bill of health. She accused me of forging the entire thing and in the following argument pulled he plates out of the cupboard and frisbeed them at me. I left immediately. About 6 months later, I had just started dating my now fiancé she contacted me to tell me she believed me and wanted to know if she and her two dogs could move in with me. I never responded. Just waking you up and demanding you get an AIDS test should have been the, I'm getting the frick out of here, moment. Painted my name all over his bedroom, bathroom and lounge room. Proposed and then photoshopped us into wedding pictures. Sent invites all his family, mine and my friends. Got an ultrasound photo online and tried to announce to Facebook we were expecting a baby. Shaved our initials into his cat and left hundreds of love letters taped to my car. So that was crazy. We went on half a double date with friends. I was just being a good sport. Noped out when he proposed when my food came. The rest came over the next week. All I can think about is how much it must suck to be that dude's cat. Would start arguments out of thin air because I'm drama. This is who I am. Then one day, I went drinking in her hometown. She ran into her ex. A day later she said, Sorry, but I'm going to start dating him again. Two days after that, she was begging to get back together. Nope. Messaged me occasionally for a few years to go out for a drink, but eventually stopped when she got knocked up. Good luck to the guy who knocked her up. In addition to being an absolute gem of a personality, she had awful genetics and family. I'm drama. This is who I am. At least she is honest. Most are like. I hate drama, but somehow there is always drama around their lives. He tried to strangle me with an HDMI cord because I didn't straighten my hair that day. He had been crazy for a while but that's the very moment where I realized it. Use a DSUB, VGA, cable on him, more wires in there, it's stronger. Walked miles in the snow to my house, tapped on my bedroom window for an hour until I acknowledged him. I turned him away. In the morning I heard rustling in my closet upon waking up. The little sucker snuck into my house somehow and was hiding in my closet. I threatened to call the cops so he left. Weeks later, he emailed me pictures of me sleeping from that night. I still have nightmares about finding him in a closet. This is by far one of the worst stories I've read here. I truly hope you are okay and have some form of legal separation from this psycho. Was supposed to be medicated and never told me. Didn't matter since she stopped taking her meds before we dated. Tried to make up for it by taking many different recreational drugs that she failed to mention as well. Found her drug kit and noped out. Her mother said and I quote I'm surprised you made it as long as you did. My husband's crazy ex, just girlfriend from high school, was crazy because she set up appointments for portrait session to have pictures done of our three children for her house. No, we did not let that fruitcake take our children. They broke up their senior year of high school, and this is when we were in our 30s. Shocked at contact from her, never mind the apt, we found out she also had her phone number listed. Phone box then, as Mrs. Our surname all those years, which was never her name. She was stuck in her high school fantasy, which was frightening. This is the kind of story that has me googling my ex's first names in combination with my last name. Just worst in case. I could see one in particular pulling crap like that. Beat the crap out of me, then out of his next GF and their kids. He lied about his police record and previous conviction from beating me. He is charming and manipulative so I get why she believed him. 
He got out of prison recently for what he did and I'm just glad I'm across the country. He started messaging all the new guys he thought I would maybe go out with asking them not to invite me out cause he felt he still had a chance with me. This happened not once or twice. This happened with around 10 guys. He didn't even know them in person. I didn't even know them. She cut out my head from yeebooks and put them on cork boards on her headboard. I found out because one of her friends told me she did, and so I wanted to see for myself. She was working during the day, and I was close with her brother, who let me in when I said I needed to grab something from her BR. I walked in and, sure enough, my head on a bunch of muscular bodies that weren't mine. I broke up with her the next day after seeing the Hey Arnold esque shrine. Following the breakup, she would drive on my street and stop and wait outside and see if my light was on. It wasn't, mainly because I knew she would do that. Then she would call me and leave voicemails of her breathing rather heavily. She then tried to get me jealous of her having another guy, which I was everything but jealous of, and she actually had sex with and got pregnant with said guy, which kind of backfired on her. So, happy ending, I guess. I told her after 3 years of dating that I was actually a war refugee from Chechnya. She just knew I was from Russia, nothing more, and had seen a lot of horrible things during my childhood. I saw people be executed, bombs exploding, people dying slowly of gangrene, dodging snipers etc. Never really told anybody this in my life since I came to America. I told her because I was pretty sure I wanted to spend my future with her. I told her it was a massive deal that I told her this in the first place, because I hadn't ever told anyone. She left me right afterwards because she assumed I was crazy or mentally damaged from all the crap I went through. She said she didn't want to date some scary war refugee. The worst part was that her parents, who I mostly communicated through because she refused to talk to me, believed it too. They said horrible things to me about it, saying I was a criminal, junkie, that I would end up beating her up. I'm just another street Arab. I am Azeri, not Arab. They basically put their foot down and said I could never date someone like their daughter. One of the worst weeks of my life really made me lose faith in long-term relationships girls sounds like you have a history of dodging bullets chalk up one more she tried to drown herself in a river in the middle of december because she thought i wanted to sleep with someone else i had to wait out and get her this was after she spiked my phone on the ground when i received a text message from a friend saying my then girlfriend had left her purse at the bar on a separate occasion she grabbed her car keys from me after drinking heavily and when I tried to stop her from driving she almost ran me over. Yeah, she was nuts. Once they start driving off, I think the best way to deal with drunks is to make a mental note of their license plate. Call 9, 1, 1, and let them deal with it. Was pregnant with another guy's baby. I found out when she lost it during a rage overdose. That was when I learned that she was pregnant and did age. That sounds like a helluva Tuesday. Genetics. Both of her parents were batshit crazy, so I shouldn't have been surprised when she started stalking me after she cheated on me and I dumped her. She threatened a few of my, and by extension our, female friends with physical violence just for being around me and tried to get me fired from my job. She called my manager and told him that I was on drugs, nothing further from the truth and had two of her other friends come into my store and be extremely angry customers saying I'd felt them up or some dang thing. Fortunately my boss knew all about what was going on and didn't buy any of it. You can tell a lot about a girl from her family. My ex's parents were high school sweethearts, except only the mom was a sophomore and he was 27. Yay. Oh I had one mega crazy ex. This girl was five kinds of fricked in the head and needed to be locked the frick up. First, she had a kid. I didn't doubt that. I saw her stretch marks. Not a big deal. She claimed the kid had been kidnapped by the baby daddy and disappeared. Okay. Stranger things have happened. Things started not adding up soon. She was a pathological liar. Started with I make $60 HR in the military. Which I knew was balls for her rank. Since my mom was a higher rank than she was. And made far less than that. She stole my car one night. And by the time the cops got there she was already back and claimed innocence. And the cops threatened to arrest me for making a false report. Then she tried playing the ultimate psycho card. 
and said she'd had a call saying her kid daddy had been in a wreck in Canada, and the kid was dead. At first, I wasn't sure to call BS on that or not. Two days later she downed a bottle of sleeping pills with a full bottle of vodka. While she was in the hospital, I did some digging and found out that she and her husband got a divorce and he was awarded custody due to her being a complete nutbag. I noped the frick out of there as fast as I could. Took you a bit but you dodged that bullet like Neo my friend. Cutus. When he got himself locked in 4 point restraints in the air because he was convinced he had AIDS and started trying to infect the staff. Or when he proudly told me he was the son of Jesus Christ. Or when he tried to kick in my door at 3.00 am as a grand romantic gesture. Or how he thought his bald spot would grow hair again if he was just a better person. Well maybe it would have, he just didn't have the ability to test his theory. I noticed my under things were going missing. I mentioned it while doing the laundry. He accused me of cheating, saying I must have left my things at some dude's house I was cheating with and began beating me for the missing items. I was pregnant with his child at the time. I kick him out, scared shitless how I was going to support myself while I was about to give birth and miss work for 6 weeks. I began packing his things to keep my frightened mind busy. Find a big box hidden in the basement full of my missing under things, huge inflatable butt plugs, and transsexual pee. My thigh highs were tied in knots with bull hair sticking out of them. I put in a videotape labeled with my name. It's him dressed as me with my clothing on, beating off and fricking his butt to the idea of being me. His nuts tied up with my stockings. Turns out he was a secret cross-dresser trans with a violent history and multiple drug charges. Lied about everything, from his education to his orientation. I don't trust human beings anymore. I wanna say we were both each other's crazy exes. He cheated on me, begged me not to break up with him, then repetitively threatened and even attempted once to kill himself after I broke up with him. And then of course me, being really upset about being cheated on. I returned his shirts and hoodies he had given to me, in shreds. He cheated and I was stupid and forgave him. Two months later I was served with an eviction notice because he had lied to my face about having paid rent. I told him I would give him a chance to work on himself, but I needed space and would find somewhere apart from him two months later when the lease was up. He threatened suicide three times, called me drunk multiple times, Switched between you're the best ever I love you and can't live without you and you're the W and the worst person ever. Die alone from voicemail to voicemail. By then I had told him that we were definitely over but the final nail in the coffin for him was when he drove to my new house drunk to call me names and tried to pull me out of my house when I told him to leave or I was calling the police and went to go back into my house. Psychotic and emotionally absurd crazy will always be psychotic and emotionally abusive crazy. Similar to mine, I got into a motorcycle accident and he told me he hopes I get gang raped and that they tripped on the cord. Next day he is so sorry and blah blah blah. Day after that he hopes I bang my head off a tree snowboarding and become a vegetable. Real sweetheart. I tried to end things several times and always got guilt tripped into taking him back. When I finally told him I was ending it for good he asked if we could still be friends. I said of course we could. I was 17 years old, naive, and did not yet understand how complicated staying friends is. A few days later he invited me to his house to play Guitar Hero, as friends, of course. I thought it would be fine because his other friend was going to be there too. Like I said, naive, or stupid, or both. When I got to his house he had a drink in his hand. Red flag number 1, in the year I had dated him he had never had a drink, as he drank more. He began asking me to stay over one last time and begging him to give him one last kiss. For obvious reasons, I became incredibly uncomfortable and told him I was leaving. He followed me up the stairs and cornered me in the entranceway, grabbing at my wrists, trying to force them to my sides and kiss me, refusing to let me leave. He was crying. I was screaming and crying. His friend was yelling at him to let me go. I managed to take out my cell phone and call my mom but he yanked it out of my hands before I could say anything to her. Luckily, she heard me screaming before he hung up, got in her car and hauled butt to his place. With the help of his friend, I managed to get out of the house and into my mom's car. He stood in front of it, in bare feet, in the snow, but I think he realized my mom probably would have run him down. 
Not really, but she was definitely in defense mode, because he got out of the way. That was just the beginning of months of balls including a suicide attempt and various incidents of harassment. I was really messed up about it for a really long time. TL. DR. He tried to forcibly keep me at his house after I broke up with him and made my life a living heck for months. Props to your crazy ex's friend for helping. First he was just my ex. Then he threatened to post some risque pics of me online and or kill himself. As if that would make me want him back. Yet he should have threatened to flood your Facebook with pics of Nicolas Cage. When we broke up he moved into my neighbor's apartment and would hang around outside waiting for me to take the trash out or leave for work. They had a surveillance camera on their front door. Drug dealers. So every time I came home, he'd be moping around outside trying to get me to come outside. I ended up moving out of state. On a trip back home we had been on better terms and were planning on meeting up for a drink. Before that happened I found out he got this girl pregnant and she was having an abortion whatever. Totally her their choice. Not my business but I called off the drinks and told him I knew what was going on and I had no interest in being involved in that drama. He tried to say he didn't even know if it was his. He told the girl he got pregnant he was going to kill himself. Blah blah blah. Before I left town I had a card in my dad's driveway from my ex. Inside he wrote all kinds of crazy crap. I don't remember what it said but I do remember the poorly sketched picture he drew of an aborted baby with its umbilical cord wrapped around its neck like a nose. Jesus Christ. The crazy bee literally made me chose between her and my mother and sister. She couldn't handle other women in my life. It went beyond just not liking me being around them. She would go to crazy far lengths to get me away from any female in the vicinity. She never did that until a month or two before we broke up. Glad I did that. Well my friend introduced us because we were both taking time off uni for mental illness, so we're probably both each other's crazy ex. That said, he has a habit of dating girls he meets in the psych ward, so I doubt I'm his craziest at least. Claimed her dad beat her, then came to spend the weekend, told me her mom died, and had to stay with me because she had nowhere to go, brought guys over to have sex on my bed while I was at work, unknown to me at the time, and one time I came home early from work, she still had a guy hiding in the restroom, unknown to me at the time, I got her a job, at my friend's company, and she showed up for one day, then never showed up again unknown to me at the time, my friend didn't mention it, stole my social security number and took out credit cards in my name to buy lots of clothes, and never paid off the credit cards, told me she was on the pill, wasn't, oh, and of course her mom wasn't really dead, then her mom starts calling me telling me she's going to murder me, store drugs in my house, stole my car, and told me she was on birth control even though she wasn't. I was too trusting. I found her online years later. She changed her name. Dang. Every part of this deserves further explanation. Threatened to kill herself in more than several occasions. More than once. She attempted to commit suicide by OD as I was on a phone call with her, accused me of cheating the day after I broke up with her, then arrived at my apartment and proceeded to strangle me and punch my face. The whole relationship put me in a deep depression that I'm still trying to cope with. I hope things look up for you man, I really do. It was Valentine's Day and I was sick on the couch all day. She sent me a text from work asking what we were doing I said that I was ill and maybe we should reschedule for another day. She responded with okay well maybe we can make soup and watch a movie I said sure. So I carry my sick butt off the couch and grab ingredients to make soup and pick up a red box she wanted to see on the way home. Make soup and finish it by the time she gets home. Long and short of it we get in a massive argument because she can't believe I just made her soup and grabbed a movie and thought that would suffice for Valentine's Day. I thought I was in the Twilight Zone or some alternate universe. After trying to remain calm and show her the text she sent me about tonight she was still being crazy so like any loving BF would do I lost my crap told her to get the frick out of my house while flipping her off. Yes it was overkill. And I don't feel good about it. That was pretty much the end of it. To this day I still can't believe someone made me that mad. A little late to the party, but take your pick. She faked a pregnancy, sonograms and all. She told me her mom died and stepdad kicked her out so she could move into my parents house. 
Her mom was very much alive. She gifted me a car from her grandmother's inheritance. It turned out to be a stolen car. She test drove a car and never brought it back. She altered her voice so she could conduct a phone interview on me. She pretended she had cancer and shaved her head so I would be sympathetic and not break up with her. She got me a job as a writer for some magazine I never heard of and I even collected paychecks. But the money was from her stepfather's bank account with forged signatures. I was sending crappy poetry pieces to some random fax machine. Which I was told was my publisher. I could go on. But it's late and I doubt anyone will even read these. For the adventurous that do get as far. It's amazing what what good. And frequent. BJ's do to a man's psyche. She had her friend go through my reddit account and then send me hateful messages about how terrible of a human being I was. More than 2 years later. You fricked up when you let them find out your reddit account. I have decided to meander out of the shadows for my first post. Apologies if my internet etiquette is lacking. I was 17. He was 20. We had broken up several times for various reasons. Mostly we just weren't right for one another. October. We finally break up for the last time. We live less than 10 minutes away from each other, so he drives by my house all the time cause creep. December. He convinces me to meet him down the street from my house at a drugstore. Just to talk. He starts crying about how he cheated on me. How sorry he is. And how he will never do it again. I wasn't 100% sure prior to his confession. Only like 99.9999999%. Whatever. Confirmation that I wasn't crazy feels nice. Me. Well done. Of course you're never going to do it again. We're done. You're never going to get the opportunity to do that again. So I saunter over to my car like the badass I am. Feeling pretty good about myself. So what does he do? He chases after me and pushes me up against my car. Kissing me violently. This guy is maybe 5 inches taller and double my weight. So there isn't a whole lot I can do to protest. He pinned my arms down by my side. Thinking he can restrain me. Super rappy. But I know this guy. He thinks he's being super romantic. So what do I do? Exactly what every woman wants to do in this situation. I kicked him right where it hurts as hard as I could. Got in my car. Drive home as fast as I could. Literally a 3 minute drive. And told my dad what happened. Dad stood outside my house. Knowing full well that butthole is probably going to show up any minute. So what does my dad do? He very politely explains to Butthole why he is never, ever going to drive down our street or speak to me ever again, while holding a crowbar or whatever that metal thing was. TL. DR. X confessed to cheating after we broke up, tried to Hollywood kiss me, kicked him in nuts, dad threatens him. Did I do this right? Also, on phone and it appears that formatting is not a thing when phoning. Reddit ignores single line breaks, one line break. Two line breaks. What is the most spiteful thing an ex has done to you? My ex filed a bogus restraining order not allowing me to see me my son who I was taking care of while she was at work. She filed that I was going to kill him and her and then take him overseas. The court accepted the order. Six months later, she calls saying, you need to start watching the baby again. I start watching my son again and then I ask her if my son could spend at least one night a week with me. I was retired from the police force due to an on the job injury and so I had the benefit of spending time with my son. She flat out refused. Long story short, after all the false allegations she stated about me, false kidnapping reports having the police knock down my door and my son and I in shock. Years of court proceedings and even though the courts and state social worker found her to be a scorned woman and a rampant liar, they awarded her full custody. It's been 5 years, 6 months, 7 days, 16 hours, 4 minutes and counting since I last saw or spoke with him. I cannot see my son, which I still pay $400 a month in child support, and he only lives 10 minutes away from me. Attempted suicide. Or at least claim to attempt suicide. Multiple times purely to get my attention. The first time it happened I called an ambulance. Only to have the police call me back 20 minutes later saying she was clearly making the whole thing up. Also regularly threatened to crash her car with both of us in it and to kill my family. And once tried to stab me with a kitchen knife. Once we broke up, 
she told all of our mutual friends that I was an abusive cheating bastard, neither of which is even remotely true. By the time I realized what she was doing, most of them were already refusing to talk to me. Of that entire group, she manipulated all but two or three into hating my guts. My ex-girlfriend and I shared a bank account after living together for two years. I know the groundwork for a happy ending. Well she was saying she had a job when she didn't and was lying about money while I was working every day. So I broke it off with her and moved out then went to the bank to close our account. I was told both parties had to be there to close the account. But she wasn't coming around for a while. So I just took my name off the account and opened my own new one. Bank of America wouldn't screw me right. Fast forward 3 months later. And I had a few grand saved up and doing well. She wanted to get back with me. Even though she now had a boyfriend. I had no interest anymore. Well I go out to get some Gatorade before ultimate frisbee and none of my cards are working. I call Boa and they tell me that there is fraudulent activity. Yet my ex had written $40,000 in fraudulent checks from our old account. The bank saw that I used to be on that account and drained it completely to cover the $40k. I am not a guy that has credit cards so this was my only source of money. Period. I was flat broke and it sucked. I took her to court but she doesn't work so I hope one day to get a few dollars of that back. My ex-wife started freaking my best friend of 14 years as soon as we separated. But I allow the possibility that it happened before that. Not only did she crush my soul but took my best friend who I looked up to. He was also married. I hear they had a baby now and he is still married. Whatever. I hope they both die of shark aids. My ex set everything I had left at her house on fire. She bragged about it over the phone later. Even your GBA. Wait. My GBA? Yes. B. My GBA is sitting right next to me. You set your GBA on fire. Around 8 years ago, while still dating her she tricked me into getting her pregnant, sabotaged the birth control, and as soon as she got pregnant cut all contact. I tried to remain civil with her, and I have been up to this day but she quite clearly told me the only reason she started dating me in the first place is because she wanted a child, and I had never factored into her plans. When my daughter was born she didn't put me on the birth certificate and put the father as unknown. Took her to court multiple times but she denied paternity was mine and the courts could not force a DNA test. She eventually moved and completely disappeared off the radar. I have an 8 year old daughter out there somewhere who I have only ever seen once. I think about her every day. Falsely accused of domestic violence and had every journal and photo of my childhood taken from me. Also every piece of physical belongings that I had at the time. It all came out in the wash on the domestic violence thing. The judge started to see it was all a hoax but dang the most trying 6 months of my life. Me and the lady split a few months ago. Out of nowhere I get a random text from her. Which happens to be a picture of her hand grasping a dong of impressive stature. She began to explain how thankful she was I broke up with her so she could find us such a dong. I wanted to be mad, but couldn't. Just kind of stared at the picture for a while thinking good for her. My buddy's ex cheated on him. With our roommate. Then turned into a super vindictive bee when he found out. The day she moved out. She filed a restraining order against him claiming that he was prone to violent outbursts and a danger to himself and others which is the exact opposite of this guy. Most level heredit guy I know, who got cheated on with one of his best friends. Then with her shiny new restraining order she weasels her way onto the volunteer staff at the anime convention he attends each year, a week before. Got his admission revoked and he couldn't get a court date fast enough to call her BS before the con. Once he did get one. The judge basically told her to get the frick out with that BS. He brought a crap storm of evidence. My ex is a physician and an addict, so she can't manipulate with the best of them. When we decided to split, it was quite clear who was in the wrong. And we agreed that the debt she had accumulated through her multiple tours in rehab, well north of 100k dollars, would stay with her. We didn't have any children, or any joint property to cause any fits over. So the divorce seemed pretty straightforward. She got a lawyer to help push it through. And I was going to try to not get one of my own to save costs. Obvious mistake. 
I was supposed to go to her attorney's office to sign some paperwork, but was having trouble reaching someone at the office to make a time to stop by. Her lawyer emailed her that day saying that he hadn't heard from me yet, and she forwarded this email to me, without realizing that she was forwarding me the entire email chain that she had with her counsel. Oops, in the email, she very clearly stated that she wanted to slap me with the rehab debt, stating that I was complicit in her drug use. Totally false. Needless to say, I went pretty crazy, and immediately hired the most cutthroat lawyer I could find in the area. My lawyer was awesome, and cheap, and he routinely put her in her proper place. This wasn't spite directed at me, but it was pretty narcissistic and ridiculous. My ex broke up with me and took our jointly owned car to another state, proceeded to lose a series of jobs and fail to help pay any of our joint debt. The agreement had been that he would pay it all, as I was a poor grad student and he was supposedly walking into a six figure salary. I had to track down his mom to get my name off of his car loan as he wouldn't answer my emails about it. I had to pay the remaining joint debt off myself slowly to preserve my credit. Dollar sign 16k. Then he had the gall to come to Reddit and post an AMA about how he purposefully left his high paying job to follow his dream and become a penniless writer. Despite Reddit pretty much immediately calling him out for receiving unemployment benefits. Which you don't get if you leave your job. He brought up our relationship in the AMA and mentioned how he had paid all of our joint debt himself when he left since he could afford it and I was just a student. After all the time and saving it took me to get rid of that debt myself. That was pretty crappy to read. Pretty much the whole AMA was very self congratulatory like that. A lot of people bought into it and stroked his ego. And it made me realize just how fraught with single sided BS that subreddit might be. I had an ex spread the rumor around my small hometown that I had physically abused her through our relationship. I couldn't figure it out at first, but all of my platonic girlfriends suddenly started hating and avoiding me when I would visit. When I called her out on it at a party, she just started laughing and said oh yeah, I was just mad at you and told people that. Isn't that funny all I could do was shake my head and say, no, B, that's not funny at all. I still have to correct people to this day. 2.5 years later. I started dating a girl just out of high school. Her ex-boyfriend was abusive. When he found out that we were dating, he tried to befriend me. I was unaware of his abusive habits until he tried to beat my butt one day. That didn't work out too well on his end. So the next attack was to call the cops and my parents and report that I was selling weed. That didn't work out either, and no drugs were found. He found out I smoked pot in the week we were friends. His final frick you was putting her little brother in the car with him and driving off a bridge. He killed both himself and her little brother. We find out later that he had been befriending her brother too. So there was no real suspicion when they got into the car together. Three years after I broke up with my ex, she found out who my new girlfriend is, somehow got her phone number, bought a disposable phone and texted the new girlfriend that I was cheating on her, used a different name and using her previous knowledge of a birthmark location and what I like to do in bed to effectively throw a new girlfriend into rage and she didn't believe me due to the contents of the message. Forever alone. My first serious live-in girlfriend cheated on me with several of her past partners. I could never catch her doing it, but for a variety of reasons I knew. I was nuts about her though, and she lied like a politician. Finally, my best friend's older brother nailed her, on purpose, to prove it. I yeah thanks for that, I guess. I packed up my crap and left, peacefully. But, I had forgotten to grab my art portfolio from behind the couch. I called her that afternoon and said I would be right down to get it. As I pulled into the driveway she dropped the lip match onto the gasoline soaked pile of my entire life's collection of artwork. Never did another piece of artwork again. Frick. That. See. Right after high school, there was a girl who liked me but the feeling was not mutual. She decided to cope with her rejection using the means at her disposal. She was an assistant manager at a video rental chain. I had stopped renting there, but my rental account was still open. She started checking out movies under my name that I never actually borrowed. 
they would never get returned. So massive late fees plus replacements fees showed up on my account. She also changed my mailing address in their system so that I would never receive the notices in the mail. It wasn't until close to a year later that I started getting the phone calls from debt collection agencies. It took years to get them to stop, and it negatively impacted my credit because I had no proof that the debts weren't valid, whereas the video chain had computer records of the rentals. I dated a hot crazy girl in high school. I thought that I would be super cool and take her out to my parents lake house. After we broken up a couple of weeks later, she and boyfriend, whom she dated before, during, and after we were dating, rented a U-Haul van and cleaned out the house of all of the furniture. She even stole my 8 year old little sister's bunk bed. The only thing left was the fridge because they couldn't get it through the door. Dad found the house trashed and was peed. We didn't find this out until a couple of years later when her boyfriend fricked up and got caught. He admitted to stealing our stuff since the cops were able to match the serial numbers on the washer and dryer. I knew something was up when she called me up around Thanksgiving before we got the news about her boyfriend that she really loved me and really missed me. Stupid me thought this girl was coming around and we would get back and life would be great. Two weeks later I was giving my report to a detective and she is now currently in jail. In hindsight, insurance paid us for all of the stuff stolen which was worth more than the current condition the stuff was in. The cops said all of our stuff was fricked up beyond repair. Not to me but my mother-in-law. She was married for a couple months and got pregnant. Her husband told her to get an abortion. Being in a small town she had to drive several hours to the nearest clinic. She waits outside for an hour or two and can't go through with it. So she calls him to tell him she can't do it. He hangs up on her. After a long drive home she comes home to an empty home. Everything including the ice trays in the fridge are gone. Only things left are a rocking chair and some of her clothes. He took some of them. He never shows back up. I dated this guy for about 3 months. December 2008 February 2009. And then I broke it off because he was trying to control me and I wasn't going to go through that again. Before we broke up he was living w me and subletting his apartment. Well once we broke up I wanted him gone. Unbeknownst to me he had gotten himself a residency permit which meant I could not legally kick him out. I spent 9 months fighting this. In the meantime he would slap himself in the face until it was bright red and then call the cops and say I was beating him. I would get arrested and then let out the next day when he decided not to press charges. Oh and he did that about once a month. The apartment was in my name so I couldn't just leave it without penalty so I was essentially stuck. He had manipulated the police department into believing him so nothing I tried to get him to leave worked. Finally in December of 2009 I had met a new guy. Well the ex decided it that if he couldn't have me, no one could. He dead bolted my bedroom while I was sleeping so I couldn't get out and he told everyone I know that I had herpes and had a history of getting knocked up and getting abortions which essentially ended my new relationship. I couldn't take it anymore. I called my dad, had him come pick me up. I lived 1300 miles from home, broke my lease and got the frick out of there. My ex wrote a poem about my dong being small, it was like 10 verses long, and it was actually very good. She sent it to all my friends, but not me. I found out 5 years later she did this. My friends showed me it, she had sent it via MSN email to everyone and I was like dang. She owned me. Luckily though, I fricked her sister a year prior to discovering this poem. Not to spite her or anything. Her sister just really likes me. So I guess we are even? I don't know. And anyway, it's not that small. It's okay. Accused me of our pay. She said that every time we'd had intercourse in our 5 year relationship was our pay, and that I beat her regularly. Despite absolutely no evidence, the police had to pursue it as they're bound to investigate every accusation of that kind. No evidence. Case was dropped. When my ex and I were going through a divorce, he decided to share with me that a year and a half prior, he had in fact took my dog, she was 14, had her since she was 6 weeks old, with him to work, dropping her off in the middle of nowhere on the way, but she was afraid of him. But he lured her into his truck with the words that every dog loves. Bye bye. He even left the gate open to make it look like she got out on her own. I searched for that dang dog for months. He sat back and watched me cry. Put up posters. Go to every animal shelter around us. 
I hate that sucker. Not only for that reason. He also is a religious weirdo. I don't know if this will bring you any comfort at all, but I though I would share. We have animals dumped out here, middle of nowhere ranch, and we have taken them all in and loved them like they should be loved. Some were old sick and when they passed, we would bury them under a beautiful oak tree and honor them. And nothing out of the ordinary. I came home one evening and found a note that she didn't love me anymore, had moved in with her parents and would appreciate it if I could be gone during the upcoming weekend so she could collect her stuff. Stunned and stupid as I was I complied, came back home Sunday evening to find the place completely empty. She took everything, except one thing, a 22 volume Britannica she bought the month before, despite my protests, and had only paid the first installment for. When I asked for explanation she told me that since I had a job and salary and she was a student I would be simply able to replace all the furniture and pay off the encyclopedia. The first thing I did, the books, bought in her name. I sold and I spent the money on a trip to Paris. B. During my second deployment to Afghanistan, I deployed with a friend of mine who I now consider to be a brother. When we first started our tour his wife told him she would write weekly. Me and all the other soldiers eventually found out this was a big fat freaking lie. Now this brother of mine goes months without hearing from his wife. The longer he doesn't hear from her, the sadder he gets. His morale dropped so low that my 1SG, first sergeant, pretty high rank, was suggesting putting him on suicide watch. So about 9 months in our deployment he finally gets a letter from her. After mail call was over and we were dismissed, me, him and 3 of our buds ran to our tent as fast as we could to see him open the letter. After seeing how excited he was, the most horrendous and freaked up thing happened. He ripped the envelope open and inside was divorce papers. I am very much against violence used on women, but to this day I wanna kill that bee with my bare hands. My ex contacted the local police, county sheriff, and ATF and told them that I had assault rifles, drugs, and bomb making materials. She also told them that I was highly unstable and suicidal, and that I would shoot at any law enforcement that approached my house. In essence, she tried to have me killed. She also contacted my place of employment and said that I was suicidal and dangerous, and contacted various friends, family and organizations with the same story. My ex was homeless, living on the streets in London. We met through a friend who put him up for a week. We dated and after a few weeks I let him live with me in student halls yes big mistake but the guy had nothing. I could have been kicked out etc anyway. I get him a job where I work and he starts fricking all the girls I work with. I found out months later and to put the icing on the cake, given me chlamydia. By this time, he'd found himself a place to live, a better job and applied to uni. He graduated last year. No thank you for feeding him, giving him my bed. Just an STD and a broken heart. I work night desk at my dorm. My ex brought guys home and had me sign them in. Then before my shift was over, she walked the guy out with her hair all messed up and in her super short shorts and a wife beater. I look back and laugh now. Okay. While splitting all of our stuff during our divorce, she opted to claim ownership to every single photograph in the house. Including the very small handful that I still had of my brother who had died years before. I found them on accident while making sure she wasn't taking more than her fair share. And she claimed it was just an oversight that my 5 pictures were wrapped in an envelope. Inside another envelope. And packed in the bottom of a box. Karma. I'm a solid foot taller than her and she outweighs me by 40 pounds now. Let's see. She sent bizarre postcards under random people's name with gibberish written on it. Three postcards to my work and three to my apartment manager's office, which weren't even mailed but dropped off. She also sent a manila envelope to my apartment manager's office, which happened to be porno magazines, which was also dropped off. She called Pizza Hut to deliver $100 worth of pizza to my work, which wasn't paid for at all. She also got me on a mailing list for erectile medicine and Victoria's Secret which got sent to my work. She also took a ton of food items out of my apartment which was not hers, claiming it was hers because she bought them, using my money. My soon to be ex-wife has alleged that I'm not fit to have unsupervised visits with my daughter, age 4. Before I left, after years of struggling to make things work, 
I was her primary caregiver. I even had to travel and appear in court on a show cause hearing because she obtained a temporary restraining order. I was a working parent at preschool. Cooked, cleaned, did laundry and the grocery shopping. I was a freaking house husband and now she alleges I can't be trusted to care for my daughter for a weekend. Told me she had a miscarriage when she didn't. Then after telling me I had a kid and the state took it away from her. She had someone else sign the birth certificate so I couldn't get custody. Luckily, I was able to challenge paternity and get custody of my child. She has since lost all rights to him. And my current wife has adopted him. The ex-husband cleaned out our joint bank accounts. Dumped our cat into the woods. Gave our dogs away. Was in the process of starving our pet bird to death before animal control rescued it. Took my car. But most horrible of all he made up a bunch of stories and had his family lie in court and I lost my daughter. I went from being a stay at home mommy seeing her 16 plus hours every day to getting her 3 months out of the year. And I have to pay him child support. I found out the hard way that money really can buy you anything. Oh. And the crap storm continues. Our divorce has been finalized and he won. Even so. He hasn't paid on any of my debt that was assigned to him by the judge. He often doesn't answer when I call to speak to my child. And he just got married 3 months after our divorce was finalized and he tells my daughter that she has 2 mommies. Frick my life. Stalked me for 1 year after breakup. Made false email addresses similar to my name and emailed everyone I know telling them I was a bad person. Or swearing at professors, etc. Called me 10 plus times a day for a year. Same treatment for any girl I had any interest in. Showed up everywhere I went. Killed herself in front of me. Yeah, she was spiteful. My son's mother freaked out when I got engaged and bought a house with someone else. So she took off for months with my son. And spent that time harassing and stalking me. Filing bogus felony charges. Etc. I told her my fiancé was pregnant. That it was an unlikely pregnancy. And that it was a very easy one to lose. So please stop causing us stress. Her response. I don't give a crap. She cost me my fiancé. The pregnancy. The house. And my new job. She ruined both of our lives. And messed up life for our son. All because I didn't want her. I told her at the beginning that I had met someone, that it was serious, and could she please just act like an adult and share our son and everyone move forward. She said yeah, sure, no problem. The day I told her I was getting married, she started her crap. No one's life has recovered since. Women of Reddit, we've had a lot of sticking your dong in crazy questions. What happened when crazy stuck their dong in you? He was troubled. Father was an alcoholic who killed himself. A fact he managed to bring up any time I attempted to end it. He tried to convince me to run away with him. We were 17 stroke 18. But I rebuffed him time and again. It didn't help that my mother adored him and we went to different schools. So, I'd come home and he'd already be there waiting for me. Every day, after I finally broke it off, he'd drive by my house at all hours and leave gifts on my porch. A few months later, he got a new girl and I began dating a friend of his. They decided we should all hang out. So one evening we rent a movie and grab some booze. My ex and his girl immediately started making out hardcore, which didn't bother me. But when she started moaning, I glanced over and he's eyeballing me. Like, tongue down her throat, hand in her pants, all while staring straight at me. So I faked ill and walked home. On my way, he pulled his car up next to me and offered me a ride. I said frick off. Then he started screaming at me from his car. Don't you get it? I'd do anything for you. I love you. I'd die for you. I ran the rest of the way, cutting through yards so he couldn't follow me. When I got home I was nearly crying. I was so frightened. My dad saw me come through the door and started flipping out. Assuming my new boyfriend had done something awful. Fearing my boyfriend would catch crap. I finally explained everything about the ex. I felt so dumb and guilty, and cried like an idiot. My dad just listened and tucked me into bed. The next morning, I looked out the window to find the ex's car across the street. By the time I got downstairs, my dad was walking back inside and the car was speeding down the road. Dad evenly said, I talked to him, and that was that. Never saw ex again. You really gotta love a good dad. 
he refused to let me break up with him because he wasn't getting a choice in it, then threatened to throw himself in the river. When I got upset at that he said he wasn't going to that was just him not giving me a choice. He refused to let me break up with him because he wasn't getting a choice in it, thereby denying you your choice in it, making him a hypocrite as well as a manipulator. If relationships worked like that where you both had to agree to split then the world would be a much sadder place. I tried to break up with my high school boyfriend of 3 years 4 times before it finally stuck. Whenever I tried, he'd hold me against walls and cry tell me I wasn't allowed to leave him. He once cornered me and played with a knife as he told me how much he loved me. The last time, I broke up with him over text because I feared for my life. Duh. I was trying to avoid that and not be crappy, but it had to be done. His mom called me saying he was running around the house threatening to kill himself. I could hear him yelling in the background things to tell me, and that I needed to get over there and say sorry. I hung up on her and never spoke to him again. Oh, did I mention I kept trying to dump him cause he had a whole other girlfriend of like 6 months? He turned into a gaslighting textbook sociopath. He pushed one of those standing rotating fans on me while I was asleep. I woke up and he was just completely pee off. I had no idea why. He told me he was talking to me while I was sleeping and I rolled over so that I wasn't facing him. Apparently that infuriated him. He was a terrible person. That relationship only lasted about 5 months. It was a nightmare. His lies gradually unraveled over time. By the time I got the courage to dump him, it had come out that he had been unemployed for 3 years, was still divorcing his wife, who was also his only relationship ever, who he had been abusive toward and had restraining orders against him. When I broke up with him he called me every name in the book, then proposed, then threatened self-harm. He would leave sobbing voicemails from different throwaway numbers, accused me of turning him into an alcoholic, and still occasionally pops up as having viewed any new social media accounts despite our relationship having been just a few months several years ago. His next ex wound up calling me for advice when he gave her the same treatment. Sounds just like my ex-husband, except for the alcoholic part. Add in a dose of identity theft. He maxed out all my credit cards on Apple and Lego products as a final thank you for supporting him on my single income through our 4 years together. I learned a valuable lesson from him. Sometimes the most loving thing you can do for a person is to tell them number. It, a lot less humor and a lot more violence than stick your dong in crazy threads. About an equal amount of manipulation and suicidal threats though. He was always super sweet and casual around friends. Part of my extended friend group in college. Extremely good looking and charming. All the girls wanted him so I was really flattered when he'd single me out. Ended up back at his place after a party. Figured we might make our fool around but I was younger than he was and a virgin. He asked for a BJ but then held my face and wouldn't let me up for air. Violent as frick and I vomited. He didn't care at all. Then he took my underwear off and even though I was screaming no he fricked me. I had a tampon in because I was on my period and I don't think he even noticed. Waited till he passed out in the vomit and blood and walked home. You don't really know what anybody is like behind closed doors. Needless to say I'm rocking some serious trust issues now. That's so freaking horrible I'm so so sorry you went through that, I'm sending my love your way. You really can never tell which is so awful. I've found that the most charming men can be the most vicious. I didn't even sleep with him. I took him home but he freaked me out so I asked him to leave. He sent me a barrage of texts and called me constantly for 2 months. He turned up outside my house at 3am and told me to come out or he'd come in. He alternated between abusive and aggressive, and acting like we were dating which we had never. He eventually went away, but I learned he'd just moved on to bothering another girl in town. Frick you Joe. I only kissed him and he went all the way off the deep end. He memorized my class schedule and my general walking route so he could catch me in the halls between classes. Then one day I notice he's on the same bus as me. I'd never seen him on the bus before. It was very obvious that he was following me home since I walked though a large empty field to get from my bus to my house. After that day I frequently saw him walking past my house or wandering through the neighborhood. I stopped going on runs or walking by myself. I was only 14 so I couldn't drive. I took the bus everywhere so this guy put me under house arrest. 
I was afraid to be home alone but I also didn't have the ability to go anywhere without my parents. Eventually I told my day what was going on and he started standing outside menacingly and stopped the kid stalking me and told him if he ever saw him near our house again he would be calling the police. Despite being the nicest guy in the world my dad can look really scary. Eventually my stalker switched to another girl in our school, then another. After sophomore year he had apparently moved because nobody saw creepy Mike anymore. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. I went through a similar experience in middle school, but at least you told someone and they were able to help. We got married, had two kids, then he flipped and showed how possessive and controlling and angry he really is we broke up and then he kicked me out and turned his anger from me to them. Now I have our kids and he has supervised visits, and I have a wonderful boyfriend that the kids adore. I got my confidence and emotional stability back. Frick yeah, so glad for you tried to force me to choose between him and many activities that I enjoyed. Super controlling behavior. I tried to break up with him like an adult. He reacted by pretending I wasn't breaking up with him. Then escalating to telling me that he was going to take the truck we owned together and my dog and leave me in another state. I switched into survival mode. Pretended I wasn't serious about breaking up and started looking for a way out. He escalated again by reading my emails and telling me which friends I could see and when, and what I could use our truck for. Thank goodness for my friends and Google incognito mode. I left while he was at work and called him from a rest stop 2 hours away to tell him we were done. Proud of you. Good job. I hope your safety is secured and continues to be. Let's see. Multiples. 1. He turned out to be a pedo who was only into me because I looked about 4 years younger than I was and was underdeveloped. 3 years in I started looking legal so he got the number of one of the freshmen I was tutoring, got her drunk, and raped her. Called cops. Noped out. He stalked me for months and kept asking me to marry him. 2. Controlled everything about my life from my job down to my hair color and diet. He proposed. Then one day I got a letter from his wife. He tried to lie his way out of it. Nope doubt. 3. Turns out he was a sex addict. He fricked every willing female he could find. Names not required. He got frustrated and raped me while I was recovering from abdominal surgery. Resulted in my child. He left me after the baby was born because he wanted a girl. He later broke into my house through a window, broke the glass, and stole a bunch of stuff. Currently owes a frick ton of child support. I am terrified by the fact that he wanted a girl baby. So I never slept with him. Thankfully, but he was insane. We had known each other for a while but on a weekend trip as a group I noticed he was starting to be flirty. After the trip he would call me and talk. Then one day he said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. Weird, but at the time thought it was oddly romantic. Fast forward to recognizing he's very controlling, telling me what to wear, who to talk to, ignoring my requests and specifically doing the opposite of what I ask. I realize I can't deal with this and let him know I need to take a break from the relationship. I didn't want to hurt his feelings and was trying to let him down gently. That was a big mistake. He continues to call me every day. A situation occurs where I am upset and I tell him I'm mad. And he says oh I have a few minutes want to call? I said sure. Thinking we're going to talk about why I'm upset. I start to explain. And he cuts me off saying he doesn't have time to talk about why I'm mad. I ask him what he is calling for and he says he just wants to hear me talk about positive things about him. I hung up. Anyways and may I tell this guy I no longer want to date officially. And he doesn't get it. He comes to my house. Or when there's group events he picks me up instead of my other rides. He tells me about how great he is and how I'm making him feel he's trash because I don't want to be in a relationship with him since it's upsetting him. A group of us go to a breakfast cafe and he tells everyone he saved me a spot. Right next to him of course. Our newly married friends were talking about us coming over to have dinner and that they'd love to get to know us more and chat. He was actively telling people we were together after I broke up with him. I told my friends that he and I were just friends. Later he tells me I offended his manhood, and how dare I talk about him in front of others in that way. I apparently needed to learn not to insult him. All I said was btwm and I are just friends. Anyway since May that year he would leave flowers, 
ambush me isolate me from the group to talk to me about how we are perfect together. Try to convince me we are still dating etc. I told him many many times in many different ways we aren't dating. I want to be single. I can't be in a relationship for my mental health rn. So many ways and he still didn't get it. I finally just stopped responding completely. One day he randomly calls me after a week of nothing from him and says he thinks we are better as friends but we don't really work as a couple. I tried so hard not to laugh. I told him I agree and he sounded a bit surprised by that. Then he told me he releases me. I told him I release you too. Hung up and laughed my head off. This was in September. He was insane. I release you what a crack up. Crazy no. One held me up in one hand and went to punch me with the other hand, as a very slight 18 year old girl, because I hid his car keys when he wanted to drive home absolutely wasted. Crazy no. Two was arrested a couple of years after we dated, in connection with a teenage girl being found dead in a suitcase. His best friend was convicted. I stayed for 19 years until it crystallized for me that yes, everyone was right. He is crazy. Finally got my life back. And yes, he still drives by my house. More little than the other responses I've read. But when crazy stuck their dong in me for the first and last time, they said it was wrapped when it wasn't. Things ended there. Two months later I ordered chicken penne somewhere and couldn't get a single bite down. I freaking love chicken and pasta and it was like I was trying to eat hot garbage. Surprise Pregante. I terminated it. Ruining my mental health for years to come. No regrets. But not something I took lightly either. When he moved out of our student dorms I was unlucky enough to be hanging out outside. At which point he cornered me, kissed me full on the mouth and said he'd never forget me. I think that's called stealthing now. And I think steal those need a swift kick in the groin. He didn't stick his dong in anything. He was a friend of a friend and we talked at a house party. Exchanged numbers and borrowed a book of his. This was before smartphones. Dude started calling me every day, multiple times a day and eventually confessed to me that he believed that he was chosen by God to defend me in the coming apocalypse. He would show up at my house, this was right after high school and I still lived with my parents, and try to come inside. He panicked when I was ignoring and avoiding him because he was trying to make sure we were ready to rebuild civilization and fight demons. He was dead serious. I finally answered his call one day told him I wasn't interested in being friends anymore and I didn't want to get involved in his plans. I didn't give him any explanation. He wanted to come pick up his book, and somehow handled it pretty well when I said I'd get back to him about it. I got his address from my friend and my dad and I dropped off the book at his house at a strange hour so that I could tell him he already had it back and to leave me alone. I moved out pretty quickly after that and found out he moved out of state. Sounds like schizophrenia. Sad for him but not your problem. My friend dated a guy briefly who was lucid at the time but two years later he was on trial for kidnapping two adults because the gator hack was in their backyard. Bro, there was one guy who I only dated twice. He had already picked out kids names. No woo. The next was an Italian exchange student who I was just friendly to because he appeared so lonely. One cup of tea led to a huge sheet of paper with love decelerations. And I saw him following me about the city so I had the campus warden talk to him. Definitely dodged two really crazy guys. We actually hear about it all the time. We just don't call it that. Stalking. Domestic violence. Obsession. Possession. Actual violence and intimate partner assault and murder are all instances of crazy sticking its dong in us. But it rarely becomes a story that we can look back on and laugh at. None of this is to say that female or male or same sex domestic violence aren't a thing. Just that the consequences are not lethal nearly as often. And society is less likely to encourage victims to stay in those toxic relationships in the first place. He broke up with me and a few months later, I was staying over at a friend's. I was doing dishes in the kitchen and my friend's brother was also in the kitchen cooking. He had his shirt off but that was how he usually walked around the house. But my ex called to ask me what I was doing. I told him it was none of his business. He asked me why I was in the kitchen with friend's brother with his shirt off. Turns out he had followed me to my friend's house and was across the street looking through binoculars into the kitchen window. He threatened to come into the house but he didn't have the balls. It was still creepy though. Looking back. 
Wish I would have grabbed my friend's brother and made out with him in front of the window. What the actual frick? Poured alcohol into my vagina when the condom broke to kill the sperm. Odds against my will because that shirt hurts so bad. Don't recommend. What the actual frick? Got two crazy exes. Both told me in the end of our relationship that they hated everyone in their lives except me. Both told me they were suicidal after our breakup. A girl I know befriended ex number. One after our breakup and he had told her that he wished to kill my cat and write on my house with its blood your next. Their friendship ended shortly after. During our last date, ex number. Two told me he thought he was a psychopath because he doesn't care about people and their emotions and doesn't feel empathy at all. After our breakup he stalked me through my menstrual cycle app. He had the app on his phone so he could be more empathic towards me when I was having my PMS. But after our breakup I asked him to delete the app and he said that he already deleted it. And saw that I had gotten an emergency contraceptive. He went on texting me asking for an explanation. Later I also heard from a friend that he has nudes of me and that he likes to keep them so he has power over me. Don't know why these guys ended up being crazy. They seemed normal guys when I fell in love with them but they turned out being crazy during the relationship. I always want to give everyone a chance. As I always see the good things in people, but sometimes it's better to acknowledge the red flags. We hooked up on Friday. Two days later he was standing outside my door telling me to get dressed and that we were going on a walk. He was being pretty loud and I had already gotten a noise complaint from my neighbors so I decide to go with him. We're on a walk and I steer us towards the tourist parts of the city so we won't be alone. About 10 minutes into our walk he asks me are you seeing other guys? Reminder, I met him two days ago. I say no, but he replies with okay. Then who was the blonde guy I saw yesterday turns out he has been following me the last two days and I start freaking out. I tell him I have to go back home and he says he's going to go with me there for safety. He then starts talking about our future marriage, that he will take me to his parents in two weeks and that he wants kids when we're still young. I kissed him by and ran into my apartment and didn't leave for days. Saw him on my street a couple months later but never talked to him again. Reminds of my bumble experiences. Uh, the nostalgia of fear on dates. <laughs> Nothing personally happened to me, other than being outcasted by my entire town of 3k people. No one bothered to tell me my new boyfriend was a rapist. Everyone knew, but didn't bother to tell me anything. After I found out, I immediately dumped him. All of this happened in a week. He was found with loads of drugs on him on Sunday, bailed out on Tuesday, put his dad in the hospital on Wednesday, withdrew $20k out of his dad's account on Thursday, and disappeared Friday morning. No one's seen him in 3 years. I'm glad I didn't get tied in with that. Was supposed to be a one night stand, no commitment, exactly what I was after. Next morning. He starts talking relationship and how this is so much more and how we were just so sexually compatible. Uh, nope. The sex sucked. Al and in daylight I could see he hasn't cleaned his house in years and middle aged, not kids, and relationship? I made it dead clear that wasn't happening. Right at the start. I don't do commitment or relationships unless he's super special. He wasn't. Nice guy. Just a mature. He kept after me for a week wanting to tell people we knew together that we were a couple, and then said he was devastated when I had to get blunt with him, because not interested in a relationship isn't blunt enough, and tell him that there was zero chance ever. He hasn't talked to me since, which I'm quite alright with. He seems to think we've suddenly gotten divorced and is playing the victim card to our friends. Freaking insane. Just wanted a little fun. Apparently, that's the cue for picking out curtains. In daylight I could see he hasn't cleaned his house in years and middle aged, not kids. Heck, poor hygiene was a sexual turn off for me in my 20s. He convinced me that his, pre-existing, alcohol problem was my fault. That I was controlling him by asking him not to get drunk every day and spend all our money on alcohol and cigarettes. Told me it was my fault that I was depressed. And that my panic attacks were me trying to get attention. Guilted me into sleeping with him. Screamed at me in the street on multiple occasions. Brought drug dealers to our house. Kept me up all night arguing shouting when I had work the next day. Threatened to smash the front door in when I finally had enough and told him to leave. 3am. He was drunk. 
I had left him in the pub hours before and told him not to come home. I let him in because I feared he'd damage the house and I'd lose my deposit be charged for the damage. Called the police and they told me to leave because he doesn't seem that drunk. He's being reasonable. I still hate myself for staying with him for 4 freaking years. He decided to change duty stations and PCS to Japan when he found out that's where I was being stationed. Not even on the same island. A guy made an anonymous Facebook and told me he saw me around and loved me. He knew the bar I hung out at, the street I lived on and about what house was mine. At one point he told me he was skulking around in my backyard. He kept messaging me offers for the best sex of my life if I met up with him and wouldn't tell me who he was. He freaked out when I broke it off with him. Threatened to jump off the parking garage to off himself. Stalked me online for about 2 years on and then, 6 years post breakup. Found me on OKC and sent me a message saying I was the only one for him and he's been pining over me for 6 years. Thinks about me every day and he will never date anyone else. Freaking nuts man. When we broke up, he followed me on a date, cornered me coming back from the restroom and grabbed me so I couldn't move past and threatened to slit his wrists if I didn't leave the date immediately. Went on a date with a guy, no I didn't sleep with him but a story is a story. Who got mad I couldn't order anything at the cafe we went to, then proceeded to take me to another place a 20 minute bus away so I could eat, but didn't care when I couldn't order there either. They told me about his plans to rob a bank and how his friend very illegally obtained an assault rifle, in Australia, but before executing this plan, said friend got locked up for the M lab he was running in his shed, yikes, I decide to be nice now, leave ASAP and ghost later because frick that gear, but not before, 1, he says it's okay if guys do drugs but if women do it's gross, 2, the second place we went to was his workplace because he didn't want to pay for my food, not that I could eat or wouldn't pay for myself, 3. He had to go to court the next day because his ex claimed he physically assaulted him. I think I believe her. I ghost him, but 4 months later he messages me again calling me ugly, a junkie s, and a b alongside a picture of him in the bathroom mirror shirtless, skinny boy abs and all with the caption see what you're missing out on. I wonder what prison he's definitely in now. What was the most fricked up thing your ex did after you broke up? I had a buddy whose ex, upon breaking up, Raced him back to his own house, got there first, and then proceeded to lock herself in his room for several days. I don't even think she talked much while there. She would just sneak out at night time to use the bathroom. Buddy's kind hearted. Christian parents fed her by sliding flat foods like bologna and pancakes under the door. This story is the funniest crap with the bologna and pancakes. My ex, when I was 20, went to my parents and told them everything we did in bed. My dad later pointed out we have some of the same tastes when it comes to sex. Then it just got awkward. I'm glad I have a chill family though. Oh god. I once broke up with a girl over the phone. At that time she was in Mexico City working, and me in Michigan. She was living in Cali originally. She immediately caught the very next flight to MI and said you're not breaking up with me. At one point she hit me with a stick. We only had a few dates. 10 stroke 10 for being hit with a stick. I was in the process of a divorce. Not yet finalized. I was divorcing because of exes cheating. There is this somewhat vague, unclear rule that if I were to have sex with her during this time it could constitute as a reconciliation. In any case, ex is still living in the apartment with me. I get home from work and she starts to seduce me. To me this seems pretty weird as she hasn't wanted to do anything sexual with me for months. I know I shouldn't do this but she stripped down to nothing and gets really physical. Basically she strips down and starts trying to push me into the bedroom and pull my clothes off. I think for a minute contemplating what I should do. Fortunately, I decide to walk out of the apartment. When I opened the door one of her friends was standing right there with a camera. The plan was to get me in the bedroom and then have this friend film us without my knowledge, so that she could say we reconciled, using video evidence, and could possibly then be entitled to alimony. That friend is such a freaking scumbag. My ex reopened several credit cards that we had jointly but had paid off and closed before divorce, 
Somehow she opened them back in my name and charged them to the max, then moved out of state and stopped paying her car payment. All of these things ended up getting reported to my credit years later and pretty much ruined any chance I have at decent credit for the next 7-10 years in the US. I've been divorced and lived outside the US for 8 years now and only recently found out about all these charges. I know all this can be corrected eventually but the hassle of explaining things to several credit companies and collection agencies is a major pitta. This is fraud. You can have her prosecuted. It'll take some time investment to prove it, but if you want it cleared up without paying the debts, it is possible. Not exactly an ex, because we only went on three dates. After the third date, I left to go back to London as an au pair. The guy had his sister send me a traditional African wedding dress to my host family, and a letter stating that she was so happy for us and hoped I would visit her in Mali. I note the FCK out. He then had his friends and brother call me and berate me for breaking up with him. Had them say I could not possibly do that because his parents had already bought the plane tickets to come see me before the wedding, and then tried to stick me with the costs for said tickets. I changed my cell phone number and had the host family say that I had gone back home and they had no forwarding address. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that was the most fricked up thing. Nine years together. Two married. One day she tells me she doesn't love me anymore. A week later I find out she's seeing another guy. Couple of weeks later it had all fallen apart and she moved out. To go from a position when a part of everything you do is for them. For the both of you to have the best life together you can. Sharing everything with each other, to absolute silence. Didn't want to talk to me, see me or have me contact any of her family. It was like she died there and then. I later found out she had got pregnant with someone else in less than a year after walking out. Sorry it's not a very exciting story, but to me it was more fricked up being able to do that to someone than any revenge story. I think this is the best answer. I was in a 13 year relationship and she just turned off a switch and that was it she didn't love me anymore. Heart wrenching. I found it more hilarious than fricked up, but mine sent me a happy mother's day card because she said I was the biggest mother in the world. Ha, huh, that's actually a good one. Went to all our mutual friends and told them that I cheated on him and he dumped me for it. Tried to tell my best friend the same thing. Pretty much tried his hardest to turn everyone against me. All I did was show them the screenshots of his text messages with another girl which were filled with dong pics and plans on meeting up. Sounds familiar but on the flip side. Only they believed it all and I lost a lot of good friends for years. Ex-wife. Moved out while I was at basic. Took all the spoons in the kitchen. Serving spoons. Teaspoons. Soup spoons. Even measuring spoons. It left all knives and forks. Honestly, who does that? My so's ex for your information. She threw herself down a flight of stairs and called the cops to say he beat her up. She would hit herself and call the cops almost weekly. So my so installed a GPS tracker on his car to try and prove his whereabouts during the times she was accusing him of the abuse. The absolute worst though was probably when she told him he could come over Christmas morning to see their then 2 year old daughter open her gifts only to call the police and have him arrested in front of their daughter. Eventually she was recorded admitting she was making it all up and the charges were dropped. It's over 5 years later and she did everyone a favor and took off abandoning her children who are definitely better off without that kind of crazy as a mother. For wasting everyone's time, there should be freaking charges against people like that. We agreed that she'd collect her stuff from our place when we broke, without me being there. I arrived later that evening to find two gas valves opened, so I guess I'm lucky I didn't light a cigarette. Holy crap, that's some straight up attempted murder stuff right there. I hope you called the cops. Called the police on my friend who had arrived to collect my belongings from the house we shared. She had been calling me for a week to come collect my gear, and I wasn't in town so asked my friend to do it. The friend in question was the guy who introduced us. Told an army recruiter that I wanted to join, and got him to come to my house to meet me. Ended up joining. Best 6 years of my life. Thanks B. Stole my laptop and started putting pictures of herself naked as a young girl, like 13 or so, and called the cops. I had already reported it stolen, though, and it's a pretty trivial process to show when a picture is added to a computer. 
That and the fact that she admitted that she took it from my home got me off the hook. She had naked pics of her younger self stored away for just the right moment. I had an ex show up at my parents house. I was 19 and living with them. Demand we work things out. I asked her to leave and she refused. I grabbed my then 11 year old brother, put him in my car and tried to leave. She blocked the driveway with her body, so I had to drive in the yard. She then gets pee that I've left and drives to my mother's place of employment to talk to her about it. After my mum told her to leave her work, she shows back up at my house and refuses to leave again. I locked up the house and she sat on the porch swing for 3 hours before my stepdad arrived home from work, tossed gas money at her and told her to get the heck off his property. She was crazy. During the breakup, I had an ex block the drive with her body too like, pinned against the back tires so I couldn't even drive around her. She made a huge scene about how she might kill herself because she couldn't be with me. She got pregnant so quickly with the next guy that I had to do the math several times so I could sleep soundly. First he checked himself into the hospital because he was suicidal. Then he had his mother call me and leave me voicemails trying to get me to take him back. He went on all my social media accounts and liked all my pictures and posts from the past year so I blocked him on everything. I ended up having to change my phone number because he constantly calls and texts me begging to take him back. Then when I don't reply he insults me and threatens me. He sent me a box with $400 worth of gifts for my birthday. Yesterday he created a fake account on Pinterest and messaged me 25 times. He's insane. I've been there, although in a less extreme situation, it will pass, but just remember to keep your family updated and tell someone if he does something really crazy. Strength in numbers. Well, there's this, she told me of her new boyfriend on the very night my father died. Does that count? 20 years together, 15 married, gone in a flash. When I was about 15 I went out with a girl, same age, from a different school. The relationship was frick the whole time, very toxic person. Anyway I tried breaking it off multiple times, and I was always faced with the old well I'll just kill myself then. She used to be a cutter before we got together so part of me thought she probably would try. Not being something I wanted on my conscience I stayed with her for a while. After getting really fed up with the relationship I broke it off for realsies, and she didn't take it too lightly. Told pretty much her whole school that I got her pregnant. That made its way to my school, which made its way to my family. This was crazy, we hadn't had sex at all and everyone believed her over me. She even tried playing this out for as long as possible, even going as far as giving herself a baby bump. She was absolutely insane. My god, I can't imagine willingly telling everyone I know that I'm pregnant at 15. She must have really hated you. Years ago, late 90s, found out my girlfriend that I was living with for a year was sleeping with her boss. It was the week of our Super Bowl party. We both had plenty of guests coming. Been planning it for over a month. I bought every bit of alcohol that we thought anyone would want. We were young upcoming professionals. She was just under 21, not able to buy booze. She pulled me aside and broke up with me on the Friday before that weekend. Saw her coming, she left to the beach with boss and told me to move on Super Bowl weekend. So, called my people, moved the party, took all of my furniture, everything but one TV, bed, one wine glass and one chair, no crap. That was it, no dishes, nothing, place was bare, took me many hockey bags to move the booze, but week drank 4 weeks on it. I heard she had her party with everyone showing up to one bottle of wine, one glass, one chair and nothing else. Good on you. I personally would have left a dinner table set up with a candle and a small microwave meal on it, but I am a bit of a dong. She took all my shower stuff while I was at work. Curtain, rod, all that stuff, and the toilet bowl scrubber. She took all that. I came home and said okay, not letting her take more of my stuff that's actually important so I changed the locks. Went to work that night. She calls and says she needs in the apartment to get her things. I tell her nah, not without me there, I don't want you taking my stuff. She says she'll call the cops, and I tell her to go ahead. Cops show up at my work and ask what's going on. I show them my lease with her name not on it, and they say okay, we'll have her come back tomorrow. 
Call us when she shows up. She comes the next day and tells me she's taking my bed. Dollar sign 700. I tell her no. She didn't pay for it. And I have my credit statement printed ready to show the cop. She tries arguing she's taking the bed. Cop says look, you're not taking it, if you think you deserve it, take him to court. Tries arguing with the cop then. Cop says did you not hear me right? Take him to court. Didn't hear back from her about it. You know what will really pee him off? If I take the shower curtains. Yeah, that'll do it. Tattoo a big symbol of my name on his stomach. In order to try and win me back. It didn't work. I was 15 at the time. Oh no. Invited herself to my house when my dog was getting put down. On the same day, when she could she attempted to have sex with me. I was obviously unhappy and turned her down. I came to school after the weekend. My dog was put down on Saturday. And she had told everyone that I had forced myself on her and raped her. Later on, a month or so later, she called me and told me to get back with her. Or else... I told her I can't get back with her so she said she'd kill herself if I didn't. I didn't say anything, and she downed 70 something pills of potassium. Had a friend call the ambulance, she survived, but wasn't too healthy for a little while. Oh yeah, I was 16 17 when all of this happened. 3 stroke 10, would not do again. I just ate 70 something pills of potassium. K. Ah. This one still sends a bit of pain to my heart. I dated this girl right before high school who was having a rough time for about a year or so. She cut herself, drank hydrogen peroxide in an attempt to kill herself, and nearly jumped off her roof at one point. Her parents were mentally and physically abusive to her, such as dragged her by her hair and locking her in a closet for half a day. I was so worried. I called child services. They came. She confessed that she was lying. It took me a while to realize that she actually was lying. About a week after I stopped talking to her from pure hatred towards her and disgust, she messaged me on Facebook. If you can't put this behind you, it's all your fault. The bee lied about her entire life to me, and then said it was my fault. Had something similar happen to me. B told me she was raped. She cried about it all the time. Like bald. So I talked to her mom about it one day and she said it was all bulls. So I confronted my GF about it and got her to admit it. Then she got mad because we couldn't still be friends. Like, what the frick man. I was fricking 14. My first girlfriend. Totally unprepared for that crap. This is what led to her breakup not the result of one. When I was 15. This girl tell me I got her pregnant. I go over to her house to talk and she's just tried to kill her 9 years old brother with a chef's knife. I pulled up to the house on my bike and see her being taken out of the house in handcuffs by two cops. She looks at me and says was just kidding about the baby. I guess we never officially broke up but I figured that whole situation was as good as official. If she's a crazy, she might think you're still together and had 10 years in the slammer to nurture her romantic fantasies about you. Keep track of when they're letting her out. Oh no. Sent me an album of her with the guy she dumped me for and all the places I took her. I feel sorry for the guy. All of his dates with her are simply focused on her ex. My ex tried to gain sympathy from me by cutting her forehead open with a pair of nail scissors after a night out and claiming she was attacked on her way home. I know because she left a pair of bloodied scissors on the bedside table like a complete freaking welly head. Welly head. New favorite insult. She created a profile for me on some gay dating site saying something like hi, I'm 22 and looking for my first time with a man, I'm one to try everything. It had pictures of me and everything. I got a lot of emails but it still took a while to figure out where they were coming from. Worst thing is that I couldn't get it taken down. I had to abandon that email address. My friend's ex-girlfriend broke up with him then logged onto his UCAS account and declined all 5 of his university offers so he had to wait another year to attend university and do it all again. That seems like something that can be a and ungiven some phone calls and be something that can be sued over. First off, this guy broke up with me because he wanted to be straight. Two days later, I had to drive his butt to a con in Oklahoma from Nebraska. Prior arrangement. Thought we were friends still. The first day we are there, he says he's dating a girl. He just met this girl too. Three days later, he asked her to marry him. 
Can you guess what she said? Yes. The girl said yes. Talk about turbosexual. Comma turbosexual. This word. I'm taking it. Thank you. We were living together at the time. I received a great job offer on the west coast. We were on the east coast at the time. Called her to talk about it. She changed the locks. Sold my stuff. Wrote a nasty letter to my mother. And contacted the company to tell them why they shouldn't hire me. I took the job and moved anyway. She kept contacting the HR department. She moved to the same area about 3 months later. Every once in a while I would see her car in the office parking lot. It finally stopped when I sued her. She got pregnant by a guy with a daughter that is older than her. Then the old man moved into her parents house with her. Funny thing is part of the reason we broke up was she needed someone who could take care of her. I was in college at the time as well as working. And his 40 something years of life didn't leave him with enough money to rent an apartment. I'm buying a house in a few months. Wrong horse. Sugar. I see she wanted a guy with a 5 year plan. He believed he was a vampire. I began seeing him as having a not terribly strong grip on reality. When we split, he told our mutual friends I was some sort of pedophile. But no one actually bothered to tell me what he was claiming I was for some months later until the damage was done. It's a strange pain to be demonized by people who won't tell you what their problem is. Spread rumors that I had STDs. Except she was the first person I'd ever had sex with, which wasn't exactly a secret, therefore she was also admitting to having STDs. She wasn't the brightest spark. Took it up the ass though. Tried to kill himself. We were together for 5 years, engaged for 3. Nothing like sitting at work on your second day when you get a phone call from the state hospital saying they have your fiancé. We had been split up for 2 months because he was crazy abusive, and also just plain crazy. I asked to be excused from work, which they were surprisingly okay with. Hopped across town to find him in the locked ward. I walked in and asked what he did, seeing as he seemed to be physically unharmed. Turns out he was caught by security trying to jump off a building. He said that if I didn't get back with him that there was no point in living. I told him that there was no chance I was marrying him, but I'd always be there as a support. I called his mother who lived interstate and demanded she come and collect him. As crazy as he was he didn't belong in a place like that. With people who were so far gone they were more disorder than person. They would only release him into the care of someone else and I told him it wasn't going to be me and that was the end of it. The last time I saw him was just a few hours before his flight. He asked for just a few hours of normal. So we cooked dinner. Talked about mundane crap. Went to volleyball together with our friends. And then at the end of our game she stood at the doorway to collect him. And he left. I guess you could say the worst thing he did wasn't trying to emotionally manipulate me. It was giving me a taste of what could have been. Allowing me to feel something right before he left my life. Make no mistake. I am far better off out of the relationship. I'm borderline unrecognizable as being the same person. But that departure ruined me for a long time. Never have one last fling. It's better to end with bitterness on your tongue than deal with months of what ifs and buts. Crazy exes of reddit. Were you genuinely that crazy? Or just misunderstood? Tell your side. I used to be a stage 5 clinger. I was a diehard romantic who turned every boyfriend into my best, only, friend, family, soon to be husband, entire social life, yay. It was stressful on the guy and left me feeling constantly unfulfilled and lonely. The more lonely I got, the more life I sucked out of the poor guy. It wasn't until I dated a guy that was a carbon copy of my clinger self that I realized what I crazy bi I was. Now I'm cured thanks to having to walk 7 months in my shoes. I was 19. He was the guy I lost my virginity to. He cheated on me and stole my Nintendo DS. I went to his job, found his car, jimmied the door open and popped his trunk. I hid a raw turkey in the spare tire compartment, in the middle of an Oklahoma summer. Frick you, chance. This isn't crazy, it's brilliant. I've done a couple of things that could make me crazy, but I have my reasons. Every single relationship that I've had, I've been cheated on so that starts getting to your head. A relationship that I was in 2 years ago was going really really well so I did whatever I could to make it work. 
In the meantime, I was super paranoid about getting cheated on and then I started to get mad at him for almost everything. I literally went batshit crazy on him. I threw stuff. I punched stuff. I made nonsense remarks and all that. Well, he needed to go to CT for a conference. He was working on his math PhD at the time. Well still is. And that's when I went even batshit crazier. I didn't hear from him the entire time. Well, he came back and apologized and said he was stupid busy while he was there. That's when I realized I had to let things go and became a better person. Two weeks later I found out that he was cheating on me at the conference. With his wife. Nice twist to that at at. I was a crazy ex. I have no freaking clue what came over me. He was my first serious boyfriend, and both being in our late teens, we sort of outgrew each other after 18 months. We split up amicably, and remained close for a while, but we kept slipping back into the casual affection we'd always shown each other, we'd be walking together and suddenly realize we were holding hands. We agreed to put some distance between us to help us both move on. That's when the crazy hit me. I don't really want to go into detail, but I did all the classic crazy ex things. Texting him constantly, threatening suicide etc. I plummeted into a deep depression and somehow blamed him for it while believing that we could get back together. Despite the relationship having come to its natural end, it felt like a bereavement to me. I don't remember how I came out of crazy mode. I guess it just wore off after a while. I'm deeply ashamed of it all now, but it was over a decade ago. Maybe I reacted that way because he was my first love, and at my young age, 18 months seemed like a long time to have been together. I knew I was acting totally crazy and over the top, but I didn't care. I just wanted him back at any cost. It was really out of character for me to be so wildly out of control. I'm a very introverted and private person. I rarely let others know how I'm feeling, but this was like some sort of emotional diarrhea. My ex often tells people I went crazy after our breakup. All the stories are made up. In reality I refused to take his calls or talk to him after the breakup, and outright refused on two occasions to hook up when he just showed up. This pee him off, so he told a whole bunch of people about how crazy and attached I was. I ended up becoming crazy, but not towards him. My ex-boyfriend was an abusive, manipulating butthole who pretty much brainwashed me into believing everyone including my family was against our relationship. I begin to accuse friends and family of being jealous when they would suggest I should leave him because he would beat me, and in my fricked up thought process, I thought that meant, love me more. When we finally broke up, due to a huge fight where I finally defended myself, and he was arrested, I still was obsessed with wanting to be with him, contacting him saying sorry, and he was feeding me lies and bulls about us getting back together. But for that to happen I would have to not testify. So I refused to testify and that's when he made it clear we weren't getting back together. I regret not testifying. Since the girl before me did the same thing but she as well never testified. I was under the impression she was a psycho liar. Which after my entire ordeal and receiving a message from one of his recent exes about his behavior. I in turn realized he was the crazy one. I honestly feel like most of the time. When I see a crazy ex story, there has to be more to it. I always want to know the other side of the story. I got called crazy just for being upset about a breakup. So there you go. You seem pretty upset about that. Wacko. A young guy who has only loved once isn't really geared to cope with losing the one person he's ever felt strongly for. As a child you try and bargain your way into everything. Striking deals with parents teachers and when you don't get what you want. There's usually compromises upon the horizon. As an adult, people leave you in the blink of an eye or change overnight. There's no way to compromise or make a deal with someone who no longer wants to love you. When that happens you're just left throwing every emotion you have at a person. I'm fairly certain I seemed crazy but trying absolutely everything and failing over and over again appeared to be the only option. I suppose a little. I didn't do anything particularly crazy to them. Just was crazy in general. Cried a lot. Freaked out about each show of commitment they gave and so on. I also kept a condom wrapper as a memento. I suppose that's a little bit creepy. So, right after college I moved 2000 miles to live with my fiance. I had no job and knew no one. 
Eventually I got a job, but still had no friends and was incredibly depressed. After about a year, with no warning, on the day my mom came to visit to pick out wedding dresses, from a different state, the fiancé took me to the side, said he was leaving and I needed to move out in a week and drove to his family's home about 4 hours away. No explanation, no nothing. Furious and hurt are both understatements. I ended up moving out, going to therapy 2x a week and was on antipsychotics history of anxiety attacks since I was raped at 17. So he comes back and I am in a new apartment and he decides to rethink things and asks to come visit. I had already taken my Amber and Xanax for the night, but jumped at the chance he may have changed his mind. Well he come over and apparently we had sex, but thanks to the drugs I have no memory of that. That night ended in the happy surprise of two positive home pregnancy tests. Again, the complete and utter despair I felt was overwhelming. I was ready to kill myself and couldn't get out of bed and the dependence of meds to keep me functional enough to work was increasing. So I went to the ob gin to get a blood test and if needed, an abortion doctor. Luckily the test said I was not pregnant, and luckily, I had a very aggressive type of HPV and gonorrhea. Turns out before freaking me, the fiancé had gone back to his college town and flicked someone else. That was the point where depressed suicidal turned bad crap insane. I was hospitalized for 2 days. So yep, I was the crazy ex and I am sure in his eyes I was unreasonable. There are always two sides to a story though. Oh crap, if there is ever a situation where being crazy was justified, I think yours is it. I'm sorry you had to go through that and I sincerely hope you are having better days now. Haha <laughs> yeah I've been a crazy ex. I just wanted him to understand how genuine my feelings for him were. Oh my god I was so young and innocent. It took me a few years to learn that he, in fact, wasn't suited to me at all. Also, it took me a long time to learn that relationships don't make you happy when you're not yet happy within yourself. I'm sure I'm a crazy ex for one guy now. Should have realized from the start that if someone has only crazy exes, there's one common denominator misunderstood i rebounded onto another guy first ever rebound will never do it again for whatever reason i expected things with the new guy to be exactly as they were with the ex so i was acting like we were a married couple even though we'd only been dating a month he probably thinks i'm the controlling miserable ex who went crazy at the end didn't like that i was splitting up twice in such a short period and that i'm bonkers i'm not he just caught me at a very, very bad time. Don't ever rebound. It doesn't work. I tid up while reading this, because this is exactly, word for word, what happened to me. Jesus Christ. And for some reason, while I have no interest in my rebound at all, it still bothers me to know that he still thinks of me as a total psycho, when really, it's exactly like you said, he just caught me at a very, very bad time. I hate it when someone starts a sentence with, I had a crazy ex, I was 15 and she was 14, my goodness, I found your problem. Granted, there are such things as genuine mental issues as a young person that follow you. For example, killing animals is a good indicator of long term crazy. I will not discount you if your story involves serious issues, but constant calls and texts to a 13 year old brain is so much different from an adult doing it. But can we all agree that we were crappy 14 year olds? We were all crazy and deserved no one. I strongly believe that a lot of crazy ex behavior is due to the dumper not being honest enough. We're so terrified of hurting each other's feelings that we end up with the it's not you, it's me and I'm not ready for a relationship right now crap. When actually you're leaving them because you're bored of them, or they have annoying habits, or you fancy someone else, or they are crazy, or you don't like the way they treat you. Yet still, when it comes to the crunch, it's can we just be friends blah blah. Well of course when you let someone down that gently, if they really love you they're going to think there's a chance you can get back together. This goes especially for people who booty call exes. If you keep dangling food in front of their noses, how do you think they're going to react? Don't abuse your position of power as the dumper. Be honest, if not cruel. Just explain carefully and rationally what went wrong. Straight away. 
the craziest thing I've ever done was give her the opportunity to walk in and out of my life over and over again. I'd never faltered in my commitment to her, always forgiving her for disappearing for months at a time only to walk back in as if no time had passed. It's been almost a year now, and in the back of my mind I still find myself waiting for that out of the blue call from an unknown number with her on the other end, knowing that I'm still crazy enough to take her back. I had to out crazy her to get her to leave me alone. She cheated on me, and refused to accept that I had broken up with her. She still told people we were dating, and would show up at my house. So I just had to go ballistic angry, I mean she would show up to social situations I was at, so I would just have to start screaming at the top of my lungs at her, and throw crap at the wall. So to her friends I'm her angry ex-boyfriend, but it's what had to be done to get her to leave me the frick alone. You're supposed to own your crazy, still reads like you're in crazy denial. He's not a redditor so his stories have never been posted, but his friends and family think I am a crazy bee. 1. Crazy because, he thought I was cheating, and instead of calmly proving otherwise I threw a chair at him and broke his thumb. Misunderstood because, I left my laptop on and open in the kitchen because I was checking my email when he came over. He immediately walked over and started scrolling through and clicking on messages. Understandably, right, my reaction was, Dude, what are you doing and I closed my laptop. He freaked out, thinking that I was hiding something and was cheating on him. He started picking things up and throwing them at me. He did this a lot, including a metal teapot full of water from my stove. I have a guinea pig, and he proceeded to kick in his cage. It fell on top of my piggy and I didn't know whether or not he was alive. At this point I picked up a chair to protect myself and my possibly dying guinea pig, and as I was lifting it he put his arms out in front of it and the chair hit his thumb. 2. Crazy because, he sent me to jail for battery. Misunderstood because, he finally agreed to pay me back money he borrowed almost a year ago. If I gave him a receipt, I wrote it, signed it, and he took the receipt without giving me the money, in an attempt to stop him from leaving. I took his glasses off his face so we could do an exchange. In the process I accidentally scratched his nose. No a big deal, he didn't feel or notice it, and we stuck around for 30 more minutes talking things over. We then parted ways and went home. Next thing I know, three cop cars show up and lock me up for battery. I got let go with no charges, no court, no bond or bail and all the law enforcement involved laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation. But I was locked up for over 24 hours, denied vegetarian food and the medication that I take daily, sleeping on the floor. The freaking freak. When I was 18, my girlfriend tried to blackmail me into staying with her via threats of cutting herself, drug usage, and suicide when I broke up with her. I still cared about her and didn't want any of that to happen. So I did the only thing I could think of that wasn't caving into her demands or allowing her to hurt herself. I called her dad and explained everything, and emailed him the AIM logs of her telling me these things. I got calls, texts, and AIM messages from her friends and guys she dated for literally years afterwards about how I made up lies to her parents and ruined her life and telling me how they were going to kick my butt. Her story was that she broke up with me, and I faked all of the evidence to get back at her for dumping me. As far as I know, she still might be telling the story of her crazy ex who tried to get revenge against her by telling lies to her parents. A buddy of mine turned into crazy ex, but refused to accept it. We were all telling her that sitting outside his house at 3am wasn't normal or healthy. She insisted it was the only way to feel close to him, and he had to understand. Jeez I was nuts. Can't believe the guy put up with me for that long. Turns out I was incredibly depressed and suffering from severe anxiety issues. I was so insecure, paranoid, and controlling. A few weeks after starting the antidepressants I felt like a new person. Like I could finally deal with life like a rational human being. Life is so much better now. I was decently crazy, jealousy and lots of snooping. However, he was a selfish butthole who cheated on me multiple times so I feel like it was justified. But I definitely should have broken up with him after the first time and just avoided the whole crazy thing completely. I was a crazy ex and I didn't even know it. While we were separated the ex knocked up one of his girlfriends. He wanted no part of that and told her that I had hired a pie to spy on him. 
This Pi was following him and listened to his phone lines so he couldn't see her or talk to her on the phone anymore. Yeah, such a winner. No I didn't hire a Pi and eventually she had a miscarriage so he didn't have to be responsible for that one. I was once with someone who brought the worst out of me. It lasted for years and I lost who I was. But now I am slowly going back to my old self and looking at it from afar. I was completely out of character with my inexcusable behavior out of pain and being lied to and used for years. I made someone the center of my life and that place was really not for her kind. Now I realize that moment in my life stands out in an otherwise plain uneventful existence. I don't mind living my life the way I do. I like working for things. I like taking safe steps. I like taking my time for things that are worth taking my time. I wasn't crazy. I was stupid. The idealized version of her, the one she carefully lied about was worth it, who she really is isn't. At least not my time. And hopefully she will from now on get treated the way she truly deserves. Nothing more. Nothing less be it good or bad. It is really not my role and time will put this person in its rightful place. Right next to other people who once meant a lot and are back to just being plain people. I don't remember how they felt or how they smelled or whether my heart rushed at their thought or not. Acting crazy was a desperate attempt to make sense out of a giant pile of bulls and I will never know the truth. So that's over. Let life get her back. Everything we do always ripples. Yeah, I was the crazy ex. To the other girl he was seeing, we had been living together, talking marriage, and when his side piece found out about me he told her I was this crazy ex who didn't want to let him go and would stop by all the time. Yes, I would stop by the house where I lived for 2 years, because I lived there. When I found out about her I moved out that day. When I was moving out, he got physical with me because he didn't want me to leave. So when she reached out to me later and told me all the crazy things he had told her about me, I had to just laugh when she said, I heard you bit him, yes, I did bite him. When he, 6 feet 3, had me pinned down and was attempting to strangle me, 5 feet 2, I'm sure he was scared for his life. What a wacko I am. Good of you to ask. There are always two sides to every story, especially when you date a sociopath. Good times. I am not the crazy ex, but I am the awful boy that you started to fall for and that decided to never call you again. The one you date for a month or two and that never calls you back for no specific reason. I am deeply sorry I used to be that selfish. I have no excuse. I can only say I don't do it anymore. Inexperience causes the most problems. An experienced person will not always remember how it felt when they were inexperienced. Therefore foresight is learned. And if someone is in their first serious relationship and they see it breaking down they will resort to drastic measures as to them at that time it is the be all and end all. I went crazy on my first failed love. We broke up, got back together for a month and then he called it off for good. I cried myself to sleep for 6 months. Every night, whenever I saw him out I would stand in front of him and try to speak, but just cry, in public, standing in one spot, in front of him, and just cry until he got up and walked away. I didn't care who saw, I just wanted him to know how much pain I was in so he would take pity and love me again. He called me once to find out if it was okay that he went on a date with our mutual friend, I said okay, then called him back 5 minutes later screaming and crying. He eventually left the country to get away from me. I think he still loved me but knew we weren't a great fit. Big age gap. I called him before he left and said I would go with him. It's our last chance. He politely declined. In retrospect, he was really well behaved in the face of all this, and was never nasty to me. Took me 5 years to get over him. Learned my lesson though. Comma I thought he still loved me. Hopefully. IFTFY was the crazy ex when I was about 16. Had this odd sort of long distance relationship with a guy who was very on and off with his feelings. On multiple instances, he'd go from telling me he loved me and missed me terribly to an hour later, saying I was too emotionally invested and needed to give him space. I thought I was in love with him. I realize now that I was just lonely and was probably a bit overbearing, to be honest, but I was also in a constant state of hurt and confusion due to his changing his mind on me so frequently and b his constant posts on facebook about other girls how cute so and so look tonight how much he loves such and such etc 
at least once a week, we would have a big falling out where I would get upset over something he said over another girl, and he would tell me I was overreacting and that he'd always been this way, he was just friendly, of course he loved me more than he loved those girls, he just couldn't make that publicly known because his mom didn't like me, and what would happen to us if she was upset at him for liking me, I found out, also, that he frequently told our mutual friends about how crazy and overly emotional I was, and even made up stories about things I had said done to make those friends ostracize me. After about 8 months of this on and off again deal, he ended things, and then was min fucked by the fact that I didn't want to talk to him day in and day out. We'd been best friends before the relationship started. After 2 months of him constantly interrogating me about why I wasn't being more talkative and friendly, I told him I still had feelings for him and it was hard watching him move on to other girls, and he pulled this crap with, I still have feelings for you too, I just didn't think you'd forgive me and take me back in my defense, when he ended things again 3 days later, that was the final straw, I didn't give a crap anymore, and 2 months later, just as he was trying to start things up again, I met a guy, old ex tried desperately to talk me out of going out with the guy, and I blocked all of his numbers and accounts and cut all ties, tl, dr, was strung along and min fucked for almost a year, then called the crazy ex due to my perpetual state of upset, not sure if I really was the crazy one in the relationship, you guys be the judge of that. I consider myself pretty sane and reasonable, however, there are people that have the ability to bring out the terrible and ugly in you. I had an ex that was a habitual over the line stepper, that is, chatting up girls in front of me and getting their number because they were from Europe as he was, calling my cell non-stop when we fought, crying hysterically because I wouldn't return phone calls, spitting in my face, throwing my personal belongings around the apartment. It was really tough to deal with because I loved him so much into me. At the time, his redeeming qualities seemed to outweigh these nasty outbursts. He definitely brought out the ugly in me because he upped the ugly ante so much. Before I got out, I ended up with a domestic violence charge but thankfully it was thrown out. Remember kids, don't let crazy stick his dong in you. Life pro tip. When a potential spouse has a lot of crazy exes stories, they are probably the crazy one. It's amazing how they can twist events to suit their needs. I am astonished at the self-awareness possessed by the people coming forward on this thread. Sincere congratulations and appreciation for realizing your missteps and sharing them with others. In all of the instances of my being a crazy ex, I was between 14 and 17. My boyfriend's between 1925. They wanted sex. I wanted more. I told them I wanted more and they strung me along for the sex instead of being upfront and walking away. The first time a guy was upfront about only wanting a FWB situation, I was 19, and into it. I didn't want to be attached after a string of buttholes who just used me for sex when they could have moved along. I was ready to try something new and have all parties be honest about their intentions. Turns out this FWB falls in love and I turn into the butthole. Sure, after a year I loved him but not in a be with you forever way. Three years after it ends and still get random emails from him about how awful I am for stringing him along. It hurts because I was very careful to not let him on. I told him it wasn't forever. I cared for him, but I was not going to be his wife ever, period. It is almost insulting, being someone who was actually led on and lied to and was given false promises. I hope he finds what he wants out there. Moral of the story, if you wanna get your dong wet, Find someone who is cool and emotionally stable enough to have a FWB situation. Not a teenage girl 7 years your junior who still believes in fairy tale love. People who were made to choose between your pet or your partner. How did your ex react when you chose your pet? This is my favorite story from when I worked in a shelter. A guy came in to surrender his cat, with the reason that his girlfriend didn't like her. He starts filling out the paperwork, but partway through he just stops and says, Screw this, I'm just going to break up with her instead. He picks up the cat and walks out the door, presumably to leave his GF. I hope he stuck to it and he and his cat got a happy ending. That guy and cat lived happily ever after. Not directly relevant, but we once took in a dog whose human was asked to make this choice. This beautiful Vimarana. The guy brought the dog out to our house, on a hill in the woods with acres to roam. 
Dogs absolutely love it out here, and we spent some time walking around letting the dog get used to the place and meet our other furry residents. We could tell it was really hard on both of them when he left. The next day he kicked the woman out, and came back for the dog. Happy ending all around, I'd say. Reject woman. Return for dog. She acted like she never even considered I'd choose the cat over her. I don't think that thought had ever entered her mind. Then she went into a big spiel about how I'm a loser. I'm missing out. There's only one of her. ETC etc. Yeah, I knew all that when I put my foot down over her idiotic jealousy of the cat liking me more than her. The cat is now 16 and still with me. Happy in her senior years. There's been other women since her. Ones that treated me a lot better than she did. It was a total win for both the cat and myself. It's a good thing that there's only one of her. Because she sounds like someone you wouldn't ever wanna date again. Well. He got jealous anytime I'd even pet the dogs in front of him. He started treating them terribly. Eventually he told me. Basically. That he knows I wouldn't get rid of them but so long as they were around our relationship would be negatively impacted and would deteriorate. Then we broke up. Shrugs. Imagine feeling threatened and jealous of your so of 14 years petting a dog. They are well behaved, housebroken, no behavioral issues, no financial burden, and honestly they are low maintenance in the attention department too. Fire riots when I noticed something was very off and went ahead and proved him right. I didn't get rid of my dogs, and I just started distancing myself. My ex asked me if she thought my dog liked me or her more and I said me. She got genuinely mad and told me I am supposed to just lie to her. Didn't last long. Not me but my sister choose our cat over her boyfriend of 4 months. He was furious when she dumped him and called her an idiot for picking a dirty flea bag over him. Cat was not a dirty flea bag. He just hated pets and wanted to try to control my sister. I was relieved when she dumped him. I never got good vibes from him. Jesus, I can't imagine having the gall to demand any kind of lifestyle change after only 4 months in a relationship, let alone one as major as getting rid of a pet. I remember him saying my diabetic cat needed to go so he could get a dog. We weren't even living together. I looked him dead in the eyes and said, my cat will outlive this relationship considering she was really sick at the time he said it was unlikely and stormed off. We broke up 6 years ago and my cat is still going strong. That's amazing. I'm worried about my cat getting diabetes because he's really resistant to bring handled and I think injections would be awful for him. But it's so good that she's doing so well. I found out my girlfriend was hitting my dog when I wasn't around. I left her and she was unable to admit that was the reason. I guess answering the question of what happened to you guys with oh he found out I was secretly hurting his dog might make for awkward conversations. Not my story but my friend. His gf forced him to choose between her or dog but that dog was remaining memento from his deceased mother and of course he instantly dumped his gf. His gf went from fanciful with expectations to beat red full of shame and anger and smashed his house windows when she left his house. Hope she got arrested. Not exactly what you asked for, but I knew a couple that had to break up because she was badly allergic to his elderly dog. They were both understanding of the situation and theirs was no animosity. They ended up getting back together after the dog had passed away and are now very happy. I bred tarantulas professionally for a few years. Most were in a specially designed shed outside. But I had a few in the house. Was totally upfront with people when dating. And if it was a deal breaker, then no hard feelings. I dated this one guy for a few months, but we'd always go out or to his. I didn't really think much of it. Around month 4, he started getting annoyed and one day, straight up asked me how long it was gonna take to sell a few spiders. I thought he was talking about my actual job, so I was like, oh, I sell them in bulk to a supplier. He's coming round on Tuesday, actually, and my BF was so relieved, but I couldn't really understand why. So the dude comes round on the weds and sees the tarantulas in the house and goes on an absolute tirade about how I lied to him, how I've broken his trust, and how he's gonna need time to heal. NGL. I just burst out laughing. I was like, you really thought I was gonna give up my job for you? Well that was apparently not the reaction he expected. He stormed out, yelling about how I was such a dumbie for not realizing how great he was Lomeo. Tried to crucify me on social media. 
but he just ended up looking like an idiot lol. What an idiot. My only request would have been that the ones in the house not be in the bedroom. Big nocturnal boy go shuffle shuffle. True story. I'm paraphrasing. My friend had his girlfriend spend the night at his house. While he was making her breakfast she began complaining about his nasty dog. My friend told her, you should stop complaining. The dog lives here and you don't. They broke up a week later. Had an old friend who chose her ex's dog over the ex. And though there was no choosing and the ones not around any more sense, my dog 1000% loves my husband more than he ever loved me. If I had not married my husband, pretty sure my dog would have given Emmy an ultimatum. Was getting a divorce and the ex-wife demanded my dog or she'd take me to court over the house. I reluctantly gave him to her. She called me 5 days after taking possession of him. He was chewing everything of hers, peeing all over her and her new boyfriend's house. I got him back and he never did any of that for me. Still have him and he is 15 years old now. I'm just glad she never put him down for doing that and returned your boy to you. I dated a guy who told me he would convince me to choose him over my cats. I broke up with him shortly after, mostly due to that. Was happily single, then my now husband comes along and says, I've always wanted to be the husband of the crazy cat lady, way to win a girl's heart. I had an ex that joked about putting my cats in a burlap sack and throwing them into a river. I told him I'd rather stick him in a sack, tie it to an anvil and drop him into a river instead. We didn't date for very long. True story. Ex says I am leaving. I am all worried about our cats. Don't want to lose them. Don't want to separate them. Ex says. Don't worry I am not taking the cats. Immediate relief. You'll probably have your differences. But you gotta respect that. I found out that me ex had been talking to her mom about putting my dog down while I was at work and just telling me she ran away or something. Before that moment I never would have thought I could have violent feelings towards a woman. But now I know in my heart that there's a serious possibility I would have hurt her had she actually done it. Dadam, that's fricked. Not me, but my sister was dating a guy who angrily accused her of loving her elderly cat more than him. She said she did. She had had him for 14 years and they had only been dating for about a month. Guess he wasn't expecting that because he just kind of shut up and left the house. The dog chose me lol I divorced my husband and his dog destroyed his house and sadly wouldn't eat properly or do anything but stress until he came to live with me and my dog. But to be fair, my ex is terrible at pets. He just kept him outside all day and night with no interaction. The dog is a great Dane and at the time it was me, my toddler and my dog in a little townhouse but we gladly took in the big guy over keeping him alone and miserable with his actual owner. You can learn a lot about a person by how they treat animals. Two friends of mine dated seriously years ago. Girl's cat had jealousy issues and peed on guy's shoes. Guy put cat in the bathtub and pee on cat. Relationship didn't last much longer. The cat pisses on my stuff and it's fine. But I pee on the cat and suddenly it's a huge deal. What a double standard. Not my partner but my mom gave away my dog when I was away on a trip visiting my sister when I was 18. She called me while I was away to explain my dad was going to leave her if she didn't rehome him. Fast forward several years later. My mom gave her cat to my 7 year old daughter only to later take the cat back after getting mad at me for something. Two years later my daughter still cries over missing the cat. I went no contact with her immediately following that incident. Terrible. I ended it before she gave me the ultimatum. I would notice that she would get really annoyed with my dog some days. Welp. We broke up once I noticed that lol my dog will never break my heart. On purpose. My. Former. Best friend gave up her dog and her cat for her boyfriend of 6 months. He said that he was afraid of animals but was willing to get therapy to deal with his fear, and then after they got serious he straight up backtracked. This was one of many red flags, and said he could never live with them. Her animals were the most docile, sweet pets ever. I was living with her at the time so took care of them frequently, as she basically abandoned them to stay at his place from the week they met. She sent them to live with her dad in Texas so she could move in with him ASAP. Speaks to how desperate she was to have a boyfriend. But I felt so so bad for the dog especially as he really loved her. Couldn't look at her the same again after that. 
On our first date my now husband was talking a big game about how he doesn't like cats and cats don't like him while we were hanging out in my apartment with my two cats. I said well they were here first so don't even think you'll win that one. He wasn't asking me to choose but I wanted to make dang sure he knew I wasn't going to deal with any sort of ultimatum. You can't now catch him holding one of our four cats to the window and showing them interesting things outside or burying his face in belly fluff. I've found that a lot of people who claim to dislike cats or dogs come to love them as they live with them longer. It's not always the case, but it's hilarious when it is. Lightly related, I had to talk my so into adopting a cat 8 years ago, and I vehemently convinced him. Sadie chose him the moment we got her, latched onto him in the car and cuddles him every single day since. Kisses him to wake him up, greets him at the door. She walks away when I enter the house and she sees it's not him. I'm lucky if she even meows at me. She's cuddled me maybe 10 times in 8 years. I beg this cat that I fought so hard to get for attention. She's one of our favorite parts about our relationship. ETA. Thank you kind redditor for the award made my manses and I smile to read how much some of you can relate. It really baffles me how some people don't understand how much a pet can mean to someone. I remember one of my dogs Dean overnight before a school day at secondary school and my teacher mouthed off to the class about me taking a day off for a pet's death. My dog died the morning I had a massive test at school. I still showed up, albeit late and red eyed but was thankfully sent home when my teacher asked what was wrong. I know this is a complete 180 of the topic, but still thought it relevant for the post. About 5 years ago, my then girlfriend, now wife, was talking about bringing her dog back to her apartment from her exes. We had only been dating for several months, but I knew this was for real and I did not want the responsibility of a dog. I had expressed as much to her, not that I don't love animals. I just don't love them in an apartment. She had her stay with her ex because he had a large yard, but she had previously been attacked by his two pit bulls. Pretty badly. Well, her ex called to say she had jumped the fence into the green belt and got rolled up by coyotes. It was definitely those two dogs again. When I walked into her apartment after she got her back, I almost started bawling. This poor girl had several dozen stitches, and about 5 tubes sticking out of her body to drain, blood, not sure, a poor thing looked like a beat to crap hyena or something, it didn't matter, though, she ran and jumped right up on me wagging her tail and licking me, I fell in love immediately, and now the only thing I don't want is for her to ever go away, drains are put in to get rid of the fluid that builds up after massive tissue damage, they also drain pus if an infection is present. For that poor pup to have 5 drains means she was fricked up 6 ways from Sunday. Give her some cuddles from me. I personally didn't want any animals when I met my girl. She had 3 dogs around 80 pounds each that live in her house. It really made me nervous about living together. I was never much of a domestic animal lover. I personally saw it as a waste of time and money. We've lived together for 3 years now. We have 5 dogs now. And they are the best part of my day. Never knew what I was missing out on. I have an elderly rat, going on 4 years, which is quite the featuring for a rat. I've raised him since he was a baby with his brother, who passed away 2 winters ago. When we moved in with my in-laws over the summer, they didn't want me to bring my rat. I straight up told my partner that I'll live somewhere else for a while. We'd been living together for almost 3 years at that point, because my rat is my responsibility. He's very old, and that I was going to see him through to the end. They were a little upset and accused me of choosing the rat over them, but I explained that he's an animal that relies on us. It worked out. I convinced my in-laws to let me bring him, and we're all still kicking. He's on his last days and I'm glad I'm here with him. He'll be buried with his brother when it's time. Oh gosh, you're such a good pet parent. I was in elementary school when my stepdad made a comment about getting rid of my cats. I told him that we had the cats longer than him, and I liked them better. He looked at my mom to defend him, and she told him she had told him not to talk about my cats. One passed away at the age of 14 when I was in college, and the other passed away at 19 after I had graduated. He was never cuddly with them but was always nice after that conversation. 20 plus years later he has his own cat that adores him and hates my mom. I love that your mom had your back. 
He's looking for agreement and all he gets is I told you so. I was seeing someone and in the beginning they would gush over the dog pics. But then they started getting mad because I wouldn't stay the night at their place. Have to let dogs out at bedtime and in the a.m. They said they could handle one night without me and if they were desperate they could go to the washroom in the house and I could clean it up later. That kind of attitude kind of disturbed me. So I nope the f out of that relationship before we'd even started getting remotely serious. My ex used to chase his cat around the house. Poor kitty was so scared. I took him to divorce court over that cat. Now she's sleeping on my lap with her sister and she never has to run around the house unless it's happy zoomies. I had a friend who was dating this real butthole guy. One weekend her parents came to town with a puppy. Let her play with it and love on it all weekend. At the end of the weekend they said you can keep this dog if you dump butthole. She didn't even think about it. Dumped him immediately. Ro. That's the first time I've heard of a family intervention that didn't just alienate the person even more from their family. Well played. When my husband and I first started dating he was pretty jealous of my dog. I bottle raised it pup. The mom rejected the litter. I could only take one. Traveled across the country with him. Had snuggled him almost his entire life. That dog is probably the closest I will be able to get to having a child. He goes literally everywhere with me. So when my... Now, husband brought up the hypothetical situation in which I would have to choose between them he was not happy when I said I would choose my dog, hands down. I made it very clear to him, though, that a large part of the decision would come from his forcing me to choose. My doggo and I are a package deal. Made to choose? That really happens? I've had my dog for 12 years, and I've known my wife for 4. For her to expect me to get rid of him would be insane. I've told my wife a hundred times, if they were both hanging off a cliff and I could only save one of them, I'd save her, but I'd take a second to think about it first. My husband tells me the opposite lol. His rationale is I am more capable of saving myself than the dog. I agree, she has zero chance and I have some chance hanging off a cliff. I have started seeing someone recently who loves her cats. I am highly allergic and have not mentioned it yet. Only been on 3 dates. I'm afraid it is going to be a deal breaker. It's a shame as things are going really good so far. There are medical treatments available now for pet allergies. Check it out before giving up on the relationship. I recognize the cat came with my partner, M, and that she is the only person who is allowed to sleep on his chest. I know my place. Never had to choose. But I remember how when I first met my boyfriend he thought that dating a girl with a dog would be a deal breaker for him. Fast forward over a year and a half and him and my dog are best friends. Love playing together and cuddling. And he cares about him like I do. My best friend hated dogs until he met his current girlfriend. He used to complain that the dog is always there and is stealing attention from him. But he knew that she was an animal lover and that she will always adopt or foster animals and he loves and respects that about her. He now also fosters animals lol. I think if you love someone and you get in their lives, you won't try to change their dynamic but instead try to find your place in theirs. A pet cannot be abandoned just because you want more attention. That's not how it works. Also, people that get jealous of pets cannot be mentally stable. Really? You're jealous that I pet my dog and cuddle with him in my house? Please. I never knew how bad some people could hate cats. Me and my fiance 7 years, broke up, and I think it was partly because I had gotten a cat a year before she moved in. When she finally moved in, she wanted me to get rid of it. She left after barely 6 months of living together. My ex was allergic to cats and had asthma. I had a cat. He just kind of moved in with me without asking over time. I wasn't against it. His allergies and his asthma never seemed to flare up or anything too badly with my cat around. We kept the place clean, etc. He asked me to get rid of my cat multiple times. I said no every time. Turns out the jerk was cheating on me with multiple women. Drop the dude like a hot potato. Glad I kept my kitty. LOL we had a puppy together but she didn't end up liking her very much. 8 months later thanks to the ultimatum she broke up with me. It was the best decision ever. It was an eye opener when I finally realized how unhappy I was in that toxic relationship. My mom offered to take care of the puppy since I was finishing up school. She's now my mom's dog and she turned 12 this year. 
to be fair. Anyone giving you an ultimatum to choose between them and one of your loved ones, human or otherwise, isn't interested in a healthy relationship of any kind, and so isn't worth your time. Long story short, never choose the one giving the ultimatum. What if the pet is the one giving the ultimatum? This was a long time ago but I just started dating this person and I was told they hated my dog. It was a bit of a shock but I was like no biggie just get to know my dog and you will fall in love with him. So the next time, we had a doggy date and he tried to kick my dog. I literally grabbed my dog and turned around and walked away. And that was that. Not a partner, but an ex-roommate and my current roommate just randomly decided to get two cats one day while I was at work. And then ex-roommate literally never put half a second of carib into M. And I love cats more than other roommates so they immediately became mine even though I never had a choice. I love M though. My ex-husband was a constant cheat, terribly abusive, and loved to destroy anything I owned in order to punish and control me. I put up with anything and everything for over 2 years because I loved him. The last time I ever saw him he yelled at hit my dog. I instantly packed my car and dog and left, immediately filed for divorce. Haven't seen him since. He's lost his wife, source of income, vehicle, maid, scapegoat, bodyguard, sober driver, and emotional support in 10 seconds. He was absolutely astounded I chose the dog over him, regardless of how many times he was warned not to act out around her. She is my soulmate and I would die for her. Had a moment early in marriage where spouse said if we wanted travel, we should give up the dog. I chose the dog, and she soon realized it was possible to love the crap out of that little guy and travel the world. We loved him hard like he was our child until he recently passed at 16. It was her first pet, ever, and she admitted that she didn't know how much you could love your fur baby until you had one. So, a happy ending. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.